<laughs> Sorry, I'm just laughing at, at uh, there's a typo in the chat here. And uh, <laughs> I typed in sexy funvers. I don't know what a sexy funver is, but I, I'm up for that if you are. I'm getting a lot of explosions in my ear holes here. Yes. Andrew Dalton is the first JJXB2000. Please, no numbers, please. John, greetings. Gary Pinkett, it's retro time. It's retro time. Mr. C, evening, evening. Andrew Dalton says, we be funbers. That we do, sir. Um, trying to get this to obey my control part. You will obey. If I recall, I thought there was... Yeah, let's cheat. 90 shurikens. We need all the shurikens. Trust me. Definitely. Don't hurt your ear holes or butthole, says uh, Mr. Dalton. And, uh, yeah, I'm trying to... We... Should we have a quick look? Just real quick. Let's interrupt the proceedings briefly just to see if this emulator has any way of changing the volume. And... Unfortunately, it doesn't. That's a problem with some of these things because I can't make the volume quieter, but I also rely for the in-ear music sounds because of the Discord chat. So if you're in Discord, by the way, you can uh, chat in that thing. But you know, let's just roll with it. I'm not here. I'm not here to talk. I'm here to play games, and I'm all out of games. Right, I'm playing this traditionally uh, Mega Drive game on a SNES control pad. As is right. Okay, so we did the options last time. Let's just check it and remember them. It has. Oh, come on, for bloody Pete's sake, how do we start this game? Damn, nag, nam it. Oh, Windows apparently does have different volumes on a per app basis. Let's just, uh, uh, you know, let's worry about the volume later. I need, to, I need to get going. I need to start. No, I'm doing what? This snes pad's not helping me. That fact, I don't think I've ever lost any life on this bloody level. Never mind, got hit like ten times. Ah! I love the music. Look at those guys. Sorry, I'm just concentrating here, by the way. If um, I'm not focusing too much on the chat, but uh, I will from time to time dash over there. Bollocks! Right, that's a good opportunity. Uh, playing a Mega Drive game on a SNES pad is what the baby Jesus would want. It's like the circle of sharing. It's had that ability for an age. Right click on the sound bar and volume mixer. Mm. Is there a pop station emulator? Are there any jobs? <laughs> Jenny! Hello, Jenny! Welcome. So far, so crap, by the way. I'm uh, playing I'm playing games today just to sort of drown out this bickering emails I see every every two minutes in my email box. There we go. <laughs> I see Gary's not allowed in chat because he's been called to his dinner. He has been summoned. Now, speaking of dinner, I had a cracking lunch today. Fish and chips. I will be posting a picture of that shortly in the Discord chat so you can admire my amazing lunch I had. And... Uh, if you were there at a lunchtime, you could have snacked on my lunch because I only ate the fish part because I was pretty full, to be honest. Fish and chips tends to be a bit too much quantity in the old UK, I have to say. But I don't mind it. I just don't eat the chips. 
or mushy peas. But I love chips and mushy peas, so leaving them feels to me like you're leaving half the dish. There we go. So, in this game, of course, you play, I think it's Joe Mushashashi. It's going to walk here on this little turny switch. And uh, unlike, uh, I think, the sequel to this, you had a shadow dancer dog thing. You don't have your dog in this one. It's just you jumping over bamboos. But I remember this was one of the probably first games I saw on the Mega Drive. Um, this and Strider. But Strider was probably the game that blew my mind the most that made me just realise that we were living in a different time when these 16-bit machines came out. But I think this is pretty much the ubiquitous ubiquitous game that really most people as kids would be familiar with and frankly what a cracking sort of title it's an early title on the system and if you play something like altered beast see i can't stand altered beast a lot of people tend to go on and on and on and on about altered beast but i think it was wank socks i always thought it was wank socks um shinobi revenger shinobi is where it's at and uh Oh, there you go. This is a sequel to Shinobi, which had an extremely good Master System port. I thought it was a cracking uh, Master System port. This one's got a lot of slightly more puzzle elements where you're going up, down, left, right, down the hole, up a, up a path. Is this... you know, it's... I like how it says go back, but I'm not quite sure where we're supposed to bow, but Let's see if it's opened up anything up here. I'm pretty sure it hasn't probably been two decades since I last played this one. Oh! JJXP says the original sequel to Shinobi was Shadow Dancer. Uh, I always I always thought, well, there you go. I was all mixed up. And there's a really... <laughs> Mr. C says the best thing about Altered Beast was the, co the digital samples. Wise from your grave! <laughs> it was like that, wasn't it? It was awful. Oh, 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 there we go. This is... Now, one of my buttons here is mapped to do ninja magic on my uh, stes control. I'm not sure which one it is, but... I... Yes! No! Look at these buggers. I thought I was doing a lot better in Cortex Command. Look how brutally difficult this is. Do I have to start all the way from the bloody beginning again now? I don't want to have to resort to doing save memory save states again. That's just cheating, wasn't it? Yes. Oh, I know what game I want to play though. I've never tried it on the Mega Drive. I want to try Castle of Illusion. Do you remember that? That for me was just a sublime, a sublime game on the Master System. Um, and I can only assume the Mega Drive version is better, but it, it's not necessarily the case. But you did a lot of... I was going to say you did a lot of bumming, but you know what I mean. Bastard. That bamboo. Shitting hell. Shit on it! <laughs> Anybody watching that su Sunday Friday night dinner, that's it. Friday night dinner will know what shit on it is. Bollocks. I'm too scared to do any ninja magic because some of it used up your health. <laughs> Andrew Dalt says, Mmm, bumming! Uh, bumming! <laughs> I'm trying to think, what was that on telly? Bow selected, do you remember? <laughs> I'll bum you into next week! How did they get away with that, honestly? <laughs> So, uh, JJXP saying, I played either Castle or Land of Illusion on Master System. There's a version of Duke Nukem for the Mega Drive. 
Oh, but imagine there was Duke Nukem for the Master System. That would be cracking. And I don't mean original PC Commander Keen type Duke Nukem. I mean like proper 3D Duke Nukem. That would be awesome. <clears throat> Watcher75 says, I ran into an old boss the other day. He invited me to his warehouse to have my pick at all the arcade machines and parts. He still has a round? What the hell? That sounds amazing! I hope you went with a van and had the proper pick and took like 10 cabs. Uh oh. Oh well. I didn't mean to do that, but fine. Might help. Ouch! So that's like a shield. I could have used that ages ago. Not sure when he's vulnerable, but let's see. No. Shitting hell! Ah, right. So he's slightly vulnerable when his sword's down, so we've got to work our way around there. Let's have a go. Uh, I, and I'm just realising, I think when you pause the game, you might be able to choose your ninja magics, which would have been bloody useful here. See if there's anywhere I can hide. Maybe stand up here, do something. Okay. Bollocks. I think Mr. Dalton is making a commentary on the number of swears today. Um, it would be good to probably not swear in life in general. Oh, I don't know if I'm motivated. I want to see real quick. I kind of feel, should we uh, have a go at this or just maybe, I'll have maybe one more continue, but maybe, I think I would quite like Castle of Illusion better if I can find a ROM for something for it. Oh, I enjoy swearing too. Absolutely. Oh, f that's it. I, I had enough of this game already. Let's 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 agree. It's a good game. It, but it was a better game in like 1990 whenever it came out. Oh, there's there's quite a lot of. What was the game I said? Mickey Mouse Castle of Illusion. Let's see. C. A. Oh, Windows search. Let's have a look. Castle of Illusion. Oh, but there's a, a Disney collection which is Castle of Illusion and Quackshot. I think <laughs> maybe the Disney collection with uh, Quackshot. Oh, so Jenny's not opposed to to, uh, to swearing too. So that's good. I wouldn't want to offend anybody with swearings, but I kind of feel sometimes it just helps your, your brain work better, doesn't it? A little bit of swearing just rolls off the tongue. Right, quack shot. Now, I've never tried quack shot, so I don't know if maybe we can have a go at quack shot in a bit. Becky! Yes, Andrew's, Andrew's got the right idea. Everybody in the chat, what's your favourite swear words? And Andrew is going to moderate the chat so that he can enable so he can go I will allow it and speaking of chat Andrew why are you not in the uh, discord or have I just cocked setting that up winkle winkle never mind the VR did you ever see the hol holosium machines I think I did was that the one which had like a little dome and they'd like c cowboy games and stuff in it this doesn't seem as good as the Master System one, I'm telling you already. I can I can get that sense from playing this. Oh, you've got fish and chips too. Bumming! So far so good. I like this uh 
type of gameplay. Now, if you had the Master System version, it actually had a couple of other game uh, me mechanisms in it for attack, if I recall. You could pick up boxes, chuck stuff, and I'm not sure you can in the Mega Drive one. Uh, Jenny, regarding swearing, yeah, I think, to be honest, constant casual swearing in, um, all, you know, all circumstances, if that makes sense, is weird. You know, like, some people just swear all the time, and you're in, like, McDonald's, and they're swearing, and they're effing and a jeffing, and it's like in a family setting. I don't think that's, that's a bit odd for me, I have to admit. Um, swearing playing a game, fine. Swearing playing something or doing something frustrating, that seems okay to me. So yeah, that's the context is important. I don't think even the sound effects are as good as the Master System. Can someone confirm or deny that the SMS version of this is better than the Mega Drive? Is it possible? I feel it was one of those late releases like Sonic was on the Master System where they're just showing you the true power and how it was actually better than the Mega Drive. <laughs> Look at that. That's a bit jerky, isn't it? The old scrolling. Oh, whoa, hello. Oh, cock. Appropriate swearing. So Tari Star from here, was that what what was the later Mickey game on the MD that had running towards the screen level? I don't know, Mickey Mania. Mickey Mania's been offered by JJXB. This is a bug hunt, man! There we go, we're at it. Phew. Haha, <laughs> Jenny says yours is fine. My stepdad used to swear every other word. Maybe he was constantly frustrated. Ghosties. Oh, bouncy ghosties. I'm bombing them! Oh, sugar. I don't think you have to pick up items. I don't think you have to get to the doors, but so I'm just going to continue. I'm like that in Sonic. I don't care about the power-ups. I just want to get to the end. Master of magic spells and illusion. Oh, no. Oh, you can throw! You've got an apple chucking button too. Oh, you need it for stuff like this, don't you? So has anybody had uh, everybody had a good Tuesday today or just a usual shitty day? Oh, bollocks. One more go. Bang! In your head. Oops, upside your head. Constantly drunk. Yeah, that's not good. That's not good, Jenny. Tell you what, I could be drinking. See, it's a weekday, but I, I've, I've not really been known to have any drinkingness. I should do a little raid. Should do a booze raid halfway through the stream and see what booze we can all bring to the table. And then in the chat, you can say what booze you found. Jenny, I know you like a beer. Where they no, oh, that's a cheeky pat. Let's do this. Where are they gonna go now? I'm just gonna... I feel that like I care about this game more. I'm really, I'm really more concerned if I live or die compared to Shinobi.
Now I'm waiting for Andrew Dalton to come online again because he's full of useless facts, or useful facts, sorry. He's all good at looking them up quickly. Because did Disney, in Disneyland, ever do anything with Sega? Because I kind of felt they had all these crossovers, but was there ever like a Sega pavilion? Crikey. I'll tell you what, he's taken a lot of apples, isn't he? Oh, phew, I thought they weren't really doing anything. So, uh, let's have a look at the chat. Um, mm -mm -mm, Jenny Bates has a busy one. You've had a busy, busy day. And Mr. C has bit, been trying to spend that day getting cool. Oh, that's, that's you're cool enough for me. Uh, JJ Bixby has a vague memory of the stu stu stutter, stutter rap. Jenny Bailey says, step, step fad's dead, stepdad's dead. So, I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing. Maybe good, maybe bad, depending on your point of view. And Atari Staff Room's currently in the bath with a can of cider. Mm. Please don't post your pictures in Discord. Actually do. We want to have a look at that cider. Um, there's no booze in my house, says Becky, because not because she's against it, but because I'm an alcoholic and I've ran out. Ooh. Well, that's a good reason not to keep booze in the house. Jenny Bade says you do rather have a beer or two. See, I know you. Again, I know everybody who joins the old stream frequently. And John says whiskey on the rocks are a good G and T. Mm. I like all those suggestions, actually. And uh, I might have a little rummage. Let's play this another look. As a reward for completing level two, I shall run to the cupboard and grab literally the first piece of booze I can find. And we'll see what that is. Another door! What could be inside? That's not how Mickey uh, talked there, did he? It was really, it was really weird how he talked, wasn't he? He's like, oh, another door! Let's see what's inside! I guess. Oh, scary. <laughs> I heard a sort of rummaging. You could hear ice cubes rattling. Ah, remember. that's what it is. Oh, Jenny, I'm so sorry to hear about your stepdad being horrid. But I will offer something. At least traditionally, step parents tend tend to be kind of horrid, don't they? So it's sad that uh, the stereotype was true in your case. Oh no! Mm. I'll tell you what, this this stairs mechanism does throw up your old. Whoa! That was, oh no! Now, to do your bumming attack, you have to double hit the button, so there's a little bit tricky if you forget that. It's not like Mario where you just land on their head. You need to... Oh, dear. You need to instigate your bumming attack properly. Do you find as, that in, as life? in life? As in life. <laughs> as in life. <laughs> oh, John's saying, how about absinthe with a burning sugar cube and all? Let me tell you a little story about absinthe. Please do. In fact, uh, actually, while you do that, please go ahead and tell your story, because it's a good opportunity for me to figure out this volume thing. Okay, so many years ago, uh, when I was younger and I was living on my own, I had a local news, not news, well, news agent slash off license to where I lived in Wales. Many of his bottles of alcohol did not have a EU duty paid label on them. They were under the counter on the back of the van type. Mm -hmm. And he had some absinthe there, when absinthe was quite trendy, with no English writing whatsoever on the bottle, with a higher concentration of wormwood in it than was legal in the UK at the time. Ah, so this is like the real-ish run, or at least real. near a real. But it was real absinthe, it was like Hungarian or something. And did it have the required effect? Well, I drank nearly a litre of it neat. Really? Were you, were you a little yeah. bit of an alcoholic back in the day? Or just not, young and... not an alcoholic back in the day. I was young. I was 20, 21, as you, as you were back then. Um, and I gave myself alcohol poisoning. Oh, dear. And started, and started hallucinating overnight, which was wonderful. So I was in my bedroom at the time, and I woke up thinking, God, it's cold in the room. In reality, I probably just left the window open when I went to sleep. But I looked down, and the floor was covered in mist. Mist? Uh, in mist, and I was hallucinating. The bed was floating in the sky. Ah, oh, that sounds amazeballs. 
it was amazing until the point I thought the bed was falling. Mm. And I was laying on the bed, literally screaming, holding on the duvet. Probably, I, my ears going a bit funny, but I thought I was falling for what must have been hours, and I was terrified. I'm not. And then yeah, go ahead. Yeah. And then I was ill for a few days afterwards. I'm not sure this this story is sounding like a deterrent though for uh, our YouTube fans who are watching right now. Every we go, and this sounds like something worth trying. <laughs> no, no, John, I didn't cut off my ear. Oh, hello, floating fat man. And the other strange alcohol story I had was when I was living on my own. Um, I don't know if you remember aftershock being quite a popular thing. Back yeah, in the day. it's always in the clubs. You'd always have the shots of aftershock to uh, yes. get really warmed up. I came home from work. In Cardiff, and... by the way, in um, Liquid, I think it was called, but go ahead. <laughs> came home from work on a Friday night, and I thought to myself, hmm, I had a really shit day at work today. I'm going to have some abs um, some aftershock. Opened a brand new bottle of it and started drinking it from the bottle sat on the sofa. Right. Fell, asl fell asleep and woke up. And there was a religious program on TV. Okay. I thought that's strange. Shit. Strange. I must have fallen asleep. It was Friday night. What's... Why is there a church program on the TV on Saturday? It wasn't Saturday. No. I had slept through till Sunday. Wow. You slept for a whole day. I was that drunk. These are really cool stories. So if anybody who hasn't met uh, Andrew, you might be able to meet him in Norbreck <laughs> this year or at Daniel Slope's beer party. Perhaps. I will be there. Um, I don't drink like I used to, though. I don't. I, not like I used to. But I, it's the the, the the point I'd like to make is that when you see Andrew, you will not assume that he would be this kind of guy. This guy does not exist anymore. Am I am I right, Andrew? Am I guessing that? You, that Andrew is long gone. That Andrew is is like a foreign country now. <laughs> he is. There were there were two Andrews, an evil Andrew, and I killed him. Ah, oh, I kind of feel I've turned the other way. The more nerdy, nerdy introvert Andrew is becoming slightly less introvert Andrew, but still pretty nerdy. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. Put it like this. I was a... I started contract, IT contracting when I was 19 years old. Ooh. I had no bill. I had no real bills. I lived I lived a lot of life between about 19 and... Between the age of 19 and 23 years old. Yes. Oh, well, it sounds like you made the most of it, at least. Yes. But you yeah. have stories to tell. You know, I don't have any stories, and that's the downside, because it's those stories are what, uh, you know, keeps you in free like, free dinners. <laughs> oh, yeah, you've got, to, you've, got to, you've got to have your stories of your life. Come on, let's see if anyone else on the chat wants to join Discord. It's wide open at the moment. It's not just for the patrons, this audio chat. There's let's a picture hear some here. more of your stories. There's a picture of Andrew, and I can guarantee, I can confirm that he is wide open right now and awaiting your input. <laughs> <laughs> His data bus is primed. Oh, yes. <laughs> Mr. C, IT contracting must have been pretty stressful at that age. Not really. It was just desktop supports type stuff. And back in, back in the late 90s, it was... It was easy work for me, and hmm. it was very good money for the time. That was a bad leap of faith I just made in game. No good. Ooh. I do remember. You know, it, it was simpler times back then in the late nineties, wasn't it? You could get a, mm. a contracting job doing COBOL on the mainframe and an IBM mainframe. Life was good. Y2K just looming around the corner. The Euro just coming in. Plenty of work back then. It was. It was. Y2K was a was a gravy train to be ridden. I it was, spent it. GDPR is just a mere flash in the pan oh, compared to what yes. you could have got from Y2K. Oh god, I I was on call on on uh, the Millennium Eve, so I stayed at home with a young lady I met off the internet. Had a Ooh, great right time. Off I'm the internet. The internet off was like internet. not even really there. <laughs> oh no, I was I was internet dating back in the day. Wow, early era. Is that that young lady? Are you still in touch? No, God no. <laughs> <laughs> she had to go back to the far east, far east Europe. She had to go back to the internet from when she came. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dearie me. 
Uh, there's, there's stories that aren't going to be relayed on this chat here, but Mr. I'm sure Mr. Robert Taylor will, when we're in Blackpool, relay many to you in, in a pub somewhere. About you or about him? Or about a bit me. Of both? <laughs> about me. Oh, dear. I feel that we should get involved on a project, Andrew. I think we should try work, work, working on a, a serious project yes. on something. Uh, but one that involves... That requires going to the pub at lunchtime for some proper thinking. <laughs> Oh, gosh. Uh-oh. Oh. It's gone all Sonic again. I like these Sonic elements in this game. You can see what they're going for. I don't think the Master System had this, but... No. Oh, now it's back to normal. Maybe I should uh, always play games that are aimed at sort of five-year-old kids, because that probably matches my skill level. And, uh, oh, by the way, I'm just... Oh, sorry, I have to... I kind of want to alt tab. So I have to alt tab because I need to see my little window that shows me what I look like uh, in the stream. Oh, bugger. Did I actually just shut that off? Right. I just want to show everybody at home something. And that is back office merch. Have a look at that. See my man boobs here. But yes, there is a thing on the back as well, but it's hard to show that. So, but there is some back office merch on its way. And, um, because it's it's all it's all you know licensed merch. I'll be able to do licensed merch. But if you are a patron, I'm going to be doing something with you guys first on that. You can be my. Should we say models? Is that the right word, Andal? Mod models. I think models or guinea pigs. Guinea pigs. Um, you. C I prefer the back office bitches. <laughs> no, that's that's sort of sexist overtones. Oh look, you can! Oh, you can dash these. Bugger, I didn't know you could dash these bricks. Baz uh, got very excited when you unzipped yourself. <laughs> a bit of an anti-climax. Mm. Baz, that's because you need to join my other stream on a different streaming platform that occurs a little bit later, and there you will be able to pay directly for me to do certain acts of nostalgic things. <laughs> uh, you need to get the, the details of Discord. I can't publish them on uh, YouTube. It's against T and C. <laughs> Spurts T over keyboard. Yeah, the T will be the uh, the least offensive fluid you'll be splurting over your keyboard. So let's uh, take things down just a little notch. This reminds me of what you're talking about there. There's a story a few months ago about how an Italian security uh, researcher discovered that the um, hush butt plugs, which are controlled over the internet as a long-distance love toy, were hackable. Oh. And a stranger could c take control of your uh, vibrating uh, anal implant. So does that, is that, does that count as cheating because it counts as rape i don't know it's a highly questionable thing if someone takes wh wh where is the moral ground on this if they can't see or know you know it is i'll tell you what i uh, let's 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 take this a bit more seriously right remember there's this sort of thought exercise thought experiment that says there's a button that you can press and if you press it you get a million quid but someone dies Mm. And the idea is that you don't know who it is. It's said someone in in the world, and you're just hitting this because it's like who care people dies all the time. It's almost the same sort of thing, isn't it? If you click this button, someone's anus will get frotted in an unexpected way. <laughs> I'm not sure what you get out of pushing the button. To be honest with you. I don't know, I don't know, but apparently it's not the first instance of a long-distance love toy being hacked. Trend Micro demonstrated they could hack web-connected vibrators. I suppose the security and logic behind them is fairly simple. I mean, you're just turning something off and on, aren't you? You're not. It, it is. The problem is a lot of these IoT devices, in order to keep them mm. simple, they don't put in any authentication. And I've done this in the past, but this was like 10 years ago where it didn't really matter. Well, you were hacking, you were hacking vibrators on the internet. I was making all sorts of things. I was IOT before there was IOT and before it was, you couldn't even explain what IOT meant, unfortunately. Ahead of my time, like most things. And um, it had an open protocol that let you basically um, 
address the registers of the microcontroller, which isn't too dissimilar to a booby board, to be honest, if you couple that with one of those Wi-Fi chipsets. And it was awesome because it meant you had local communication between devices and internet communication all running seamlessly on the same protocol. But yeah, you would have that same issue this you had the ports open on your router and or port mm. forwarding uh, yeah you're only really relying on a very crude port for, yeah, your firewall being your, your router being a firewall between the outside world and the inside of your house and that, that's still a problem for most of these devices to be honest with you they well it is for many things because so many people I mean, this is no no disrespect to anyone i mean i'm fortunate enough like yourself to come from a technology background and i understand about setting up routers and firewalls etc at home However, a lot of people will get these IoT type devices and they will put in such a basic firewall or even go as far as chuck something in the DMZ. Oh, it's working now. Well, absolutely. And not, yeah. And not realize they're actually forwarding the whole range of their device to the internet. Crikey, I tell you what, this is a tricky old game. This is, I'm, I'm getting, you know, I have to start concentrating now. Hopefully it's unlimited yeah. continues. Um, oh, there's only got. It's limited continues. That's not good. Um, well, if you think about it, I'll give you another problem with with all sorts of IoT and its small embedded devices. Is that you often don't have a UI on them. It might be just a button. So think of the difficulty in setting up IP addresses and stuff. And if you remember early digital mm. photo frames, all of that, it was a yep. nightmare, wasn't it? Before mm -hmm. things had kind of maybe a Bluetooth so you could just use your phone to hook onto them or they have an access point mode, stuff like that. Um, so yeah, you really didn't want anything other than maybe its IP address to be a configurable parameter. Mm. It's but amazing. Yeah. There you go. So if there is anybody in the chat who's interested in a range of sex toys that are controllable over the internet and wants as a, as a business proposition for me to design the hardware i'm all up for that i'll have a go well i think the chat seemed to enjoy and talk about uh, it's 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 triggered quite a quite an active chat going on between becky and jxb and baz about the uh <laughs> the uh internet connected uh pleasure items do you think i could gain some sort of internet um infamy by becoming mm -hmm. uh, one of the first people who will do a github and youtube live stream for designing open source digitally controlled sex toys and the protocols to control them i think that could be a valuable service to the community and we could maybe stop all of these these hack attacks by having a yes. proper open standard for it and why not make them cloud connected with a cloud backend? Because it's trendy. Yeah, we need a plenty of backend action. But what would you mm -hmm. call it? what would you call it? So anybody in the chat, if we're gonna we're gonna launch our uh, back door back office, sorry, um, <laughs> open source sex toy platform, um, can you think of any suitable names for it? Because you need a catchy name, don't you, for a project? Otherwise, it just doesn't. I think also, actually, the name, that's why it's important to name a project early on. Because if you've been at work and you say, we're going to start a project, until it has a name, it's not a real thing. Mm. JSP says, your one-stop stream for ghetto-rigged sex toys. I, I think it should just be that people could just, yeah, they could just build it out of stuff like, say, Arduino-type things or Raspberry Pis. Mm. So you attach a, you know, you choose your main core... You might need a pie if you need some extra processing power for what you've got in mind. And uh, your implement, you know, your attachments, your motor, your uh, big AC your, adapters. Your egg whisk. Your egg large whisk. Capacitors. Yeah. Your sous vide attachment. So you can get it to do everything you need. I mean, don't just limit yourself. Daniel says, what conversation did I just stumble upon when starting this stream? Welcome <laughs> to the back office, sir. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think this is fairly non-typical of our mm -hmm. conversations, really. To date, I don't know what they're normally about, but they're, it's often technology-based. Um, right, so I'm going to come up with a new name then, Andrew. My first suggestion for throwing... I'm going to throw in the hat is... Um, mm -hmm. mm, no, actually, it's really difficult because you want it to sound a bit sexy, mm, but not perverse. Yeah, like I'm trying to. Th you don't want to give a name of a Roman god or something. It's too easy and too lame. 
Okay, come on then. I want the chat to come up with some, yeah, um, some suggestions. Because I'm trying to play. I'm trying to play this. You know, you're just just being a distracting all of you lot. So yeah, you can do some work. <laughs> well, Baz says, Pirator, which I don't know about that. That sounds a bit like a gardening product. But isn't it like the Pirator? Isn't that like the part of, between your balls and your ass or something? Oh, Pirateneum. Oh, yeah. It's got that. It's a bit, bit that. Actually. I'm going to tell you another story. Please another do. Another story about the taint while you guys are all talking about that. I was on a... Uh, when I worked in an IT department at a certain place, we were quite legendary that we would never be invited back to the place where we had our Christmas party for a second year because <laughs> of the chaos we caused. At one Christmas party, one of the uh, administrators decided to dance on a pool table with a pool cue pressing it against his taint and he slipped <laughs> no one realized uh that he thought he'd hurt himself a bit but he carried on on the, on the piss okay then when he got home his wife asked him as he was getting undressed about midnight what was all that blood in his trousers <laughs> that's something you never want to hear <laughs> no he had actually impaled himself in the taint about six inches with half a broken pool cue how? Resulting in him being taken to the hospital in an ambulance and having to sit there. The only thing they could put him in while they were treating him was birthing stirrups. Oh. And because it was such an unusual uh, injury, as they do at the hospital, they invited a group of student doctors to uh, come and look at him sat there, legs akimbo. Yeah. With his, with his, with his um, extra orifice he'd created. But what I don't get um, is how did he? So hang on, when you say how did he, how did he not feel it? He was incredibly drunk. You'd have to be, wouldn't you? But I mean, was it six yeah. inch? How much was actually in him? I guess is about the six, genuinely about six inches. The doctor said he was so lucky. If it had been slightly to the side, either way, he would have hit an artery and died. So it it was actually sitting in the cavity behind his scrotum, between the scrotum yep. and bowel. Yep, he'd missed everything. Nest, course, nesting next to his prostate. Delicious. Well, he'd stabbed himself there and he pulled it out straight away, but he didn't realise how much in damage he'd done to himself. Oh, oh dear. Oh, mm. no thank you. Um, so I, there you that's, that's a taint story for you. <laughs> Is that also, isn't that called the Gooch? Geech? Keech? Gooch. 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 Yes. What am I. What? So I'm playing something which is, I think, is a Bible game. I was going to say it looks rather Bible, Bible related. Bible JXB game. says though, JXB says though I can see a market for an open source software thing for an Ar for Arduino Pi to drive a motor with customization and maybe sound driven stuff like that to be useful for sex and non sex stuff. Um, actually, I I already have a uh, open standard for this that I should publish. I have actual gadgets that rely and run already on my VM that I've created for this. So if you want to, you could take that VM and port it into any microcontroller or ARM-based system or PC. Right, the, there's a driver stack layer. You can just take that to, to drive then whatever new peripheral or motor or something you've got. Away you go. So I think I may have published some of that on my GitHub and it might be either the back office show GitHub or my personal uh, Andrew Armstrong GitHub, but I will let you know. But yeah, nag me in Discord. Nagging me in Discord on projects seems to work. Have you noticed that, Andrew? I just generally think Discord works. Discord is a great way of communication. Because Rob was very insistent on pestering me about his uh, Commodore Pi thing. No, yeah. And, uh, and, then he, and then he buggered off and didn't turn up for the stream. That's right. And it's very easy for me to ignore people on Twitter. <laughs> but that, yes. I couldn't get away from him on Discord, and then yeah, he didn't didn't even watch it. Well, I hope I hope he's watched it since. I'm sure he will have done. Jenny says, if she was male, her eyes would be watering. I'm sure they would be. And Baz says something tells me Andrew Backroom is really oh the back office thing he means is really a sex dungeon. Um, well, at, at Mr. Dalton will be able, and Mr. Taylor can confirm or deny oh. that. Am I to reveal the secrets of the back office? Um, I think you can. I think I might. I must have done a little tour video once. Um, 
in fact, there were... I'm just sorry, I'm just looking. I've got a list of Mega Drive games, by the way, off camera. If you want to just shout out some Mega Drive titles in the, in the stream, I'll try them. Um, early back office show videos, before I got very lazy... I'm going to say busy, but more lazy... Um, were filmed from a variety of angles, so you could see really more what's going on. It's, it's not massive space, um, but big enough for my needs. <laughs> Um, and there is something here. There is actually uh, webcams, or well, not webcams, just security type cameras in here because it was a proper office. And I have wondered sometimes, do I want to turn those on so that you can go onto my website and see a live back office feed? But I'm thinking, uh, what sort of things could one get up to that you wouldn't want? Well, exactly, <laughs> exactly. You don't want to be Jenny Cam if anyone remembers that. What was Jenny Cam? So Jenny Cam was in the very early days of the internet. It was a lady called Jenny, and she wired up her house with uh, webcams, basically, and lived her life on her website for a few years. And did people, they would pay pay her money? Or... Yes. Yeah, and it was literally her life. It was very almost like an inspiration for films like The Truman Show, that kind of thing. It really was. She was the first to do it. So did it, fe it featured a lot of just eating and farting and going to the toilet and it had absolutely all aspects of her life from eating sitting down watching the tv watching films and you got to remember this was so they were just still images mm. um but it, it did include her in the shower um having relations with her partner it even included her cheating on her partner once oh really and it, well, her, mm. her partners i guess up for this they knew it was all going on no 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 it was just her life absolutely out uh, it, she didn't manipulate it at all mm. this so, was in 90 96 to 2003 jenny cam mm. well i think it might be i would, wouldn't mind trying to figure out how to do a live stream I'm, I'm, i i do i have figured it out. i'm just getting too lazy to actually just drag the wire across um, I'm going to uh, put one of my um, cameras over the workbench so when I um, do a project, when I'm recording it, there'll be a live stream and maybe initially it'll be for patrons till it's working properly. But It'll just be me making my videos basically, a behind mm. the scenes of me doing it but with the difference that if I'm cocking up, people notice it, they'll be able to say, hang on, you're doing that wrong. <laughs> like I said, sounds like big, like the big, Bro like Big Brother. It was a bit like Big Brother, but it was it predates Big Brother by quite a significant amount. I quite like that um, Truman Show that you mentioned earlier. Was that the one with um, what's his name? Jim Carrey. Yeah, that mm. was quite good. It does make me feel like something recently we've been watching Westworld, right? Because that's got aspects mm. of the Truman Show. If you were from the point of view of one of the uh, Hosts. Yes. I was watching uh, actually today. As I've been off work today, I was watching uh, the film Westworld. Ah, with um. Yul Brynner. Yul Brynner, yeah. Mm. It's quite good, wasn't it? It's all right. It's it's very much of the towards the end of the seventies era of sci-fi where everything had to be depressing. Well, you're not you're not suggesting that Zardos was depressing. All all seventies sci-fi, especially towards the end, had to be depressing. <laughs> I can't remember though. Did Future World come after Web Westworld? Yes, it did. Yes, it did. No, I... my... Michael Crichton was not involved, but Michael Crichton does seem to like to write books about theme parks. He can't. Get, he just can't help himself, can he? Really? Oh, Baz is talking about Saturn V. Oh, I love that movie. Saturn V. It's only got three people in it, hasn't it? One of them's Harvey Keitel. His voice is dubbed over. What well, is it? Is Harvey Keitel's voice dubbed over in that? Yeah, in Saturn V, it's dubbed over. I've got it somewhere, but it's on VHS, so we're not going to be watching that anytime it, soon. You can. It may be available somewhere else. Okay, brilliant. Might watch it tonight. I like the robot in it. What's the baddie robot? Oh, sorry. Do you mean Saturn Three? Sorry, not Saturn V. Sorry. Hang on. It's Saturn 3, the film is, I believe. Hang on, we're getting all confused here now. I'm uh, talking about the one... Go on. With the robot. I'm talking about the one with the robot, the uh, keep, uh, Har the Harvey Keitel, um, yes. Kurt Russell's Harry dad. Yeah, Kirk Douglas. And they're on like a, an agro 
plant. Yeah, that's Saturn Saturn three, not Saturn five. So you're thinking of is it what was what was what was the thing? Is it what was the one with the ants? There's one with the ants. That's a great movie. And there's one with like the underground bunker with a virus, and you keep going through the levels as the virus was fucking shit up. Hmm, Hang on, I've got, got to come up with a name. The ants one is phase. I think that was phase three. Phase had phases in it. Yeah, Bal, more... says, Bal says he is thinking of Saturn. Saturn three. Okay. He just got the title slightly wrong. But there we go. Zebra just saying phase four ants. Okay. So, uh, Harvey Keitel was dubbed by Roy Dotris, father of uh, Karen and Michelle Dotris from uh, Michelle Dotris from uh, Mary Poppins and the Gnome Mobile, and. Karen Dotress from Some Mothers Do Have Them, who played Betty. God, oh, that's complicated, isn't it? Yeah, I see, I remember. I think there was there a, was that a movie with some naked bums in it? I know that's like how we how to we kind of seem to rate movies nowadays by their nakedness. I do think there was some in that. Would it have been a movie that if you watched it with your mother and father in the room, you might have gone a little bit? Ooh, I'm a bit embarrassed. <laughs> Don't know. Uh, no, I don't think there's any bottoms in Saturn Three. <laughs> any bottoms? In it. That is Andromeda um, strain. Come on, it's not rubbish, Becky. Yeah. It's great. <laughs> unfortunately, IMDb does not tell me why his role was, uh, his voice was dubbed. Unfortunately, maybe that was in the olden days before he learnt to do voice voices other than his original one, and his original one was too like <laughs> gangster. <laughs> I think maybe maybe. I don't know with Harvey Keitel. This is hard, isn't it, this game? This is terrible. Oh, yeah, Bazza says, Defo, the leading lady got naked. Yeah, I was like, <laughs> Defo. <laughs> oh, I, I know good sci-fi. Um, the the sci-fi of John Carpenter. Should we talk about John Carpenter a little bit? Do you mean the original? You don't mean the film John Carpenter. You mean the original? I mean, like, uh, they live. Ed Edgar, and... Rice, wasn't Edgar Rice Burroughs wrote it. Which one? Is oh, you mean the John Carter of Mars? Go, yeah, the, no, no, yeah, I'm not talking about. It. I, might, I might even be getting the wrong um, name wrong on the actual. The guy who did loads of sci-fi movies like Dark Star. So if you look up Dark Star, then work backwards. Mm -hmm. That's the person I'm talking about. Ooh, missile command. And uh, the room, as Becky says, is a great film. The Room. What's the Room? You're thinking of John. You're thinking of John Carpenter, by the way. Andrew. What did I say? May I? May I? That's what I meant. <laughs> yeah, John. Car John Carter. You said. Did I? John Carpenter wrote it. John Carter was a film. It was a box office bomb by Disney. Oh yeah, I I, I quite like that one. You are New York or something. I can't remember what they called him. Like, <laughs> how this? This is terrible. Look at this. This is a Mega Drive. Of the Room camera. is a hysterical film. It's literally one of the worst films ever made. It, but it's so bad, it's actually had a film made about the making of it. Because the guy who wrote it and direct well, the guy who half wrote it and directed it, a guy called Tommy Wiseau, is this character of mystery. Right. Okay. And he barely speaks English. It's just it's really hard to explain. Um but there's a there's a documentary called um, oh, oh, Precinct 13, that was awesome. I love Assault, Assault on Precinct 13. Yeah. Was that one of his movies as well then? Yes, it is. It's got fantastic soundtrack as well. Now, has anybody actually seen Dark Star? Years ago, I've seen Dark Star. If not, you re people really need to go watch Dark Star because I love that. Remember, the, it was the idea that it. Okay, in the future, you have it's a bit like Silent Running in that you've got these crew flying around in uh, the planet, but this crew's job is to go and clear away all these asteroids that could hit the Earth at some point in the dear, near future, and um, they have these bombs on them. I don't know if the bombs were called Dark Stars or if it was the name of the ship or whatever, but they're kind of sentient. Um, or at least the bomb becomes sentient. So it's a bit like this crew trying to convince this bomb to do its job. Um, but it's, it's quite hilarious. I think there's some aliens attacking the ship and all sorts going on. So it's definitely worth watching. Very odd. Sounds a good one. There's a, 
Mike, evening to Mike, who says, don't forget The Thing. That's another great film. Oh, and there's so many versions of it that are awesome, by the way. It's like, I like the black and white version. I like the 80s version. It's all good. There was a remake. Jenny, Jenny says she loves sci-fi, but her new man doesn't. Well, well, I think you want to ask yourself, is that relationship really going anywhere? What films, what's his favourite film, Jenny? Let's ask him now. Let's get the answer in the chat. We'll, we'll solve this for you. If it's a carry-on film, good. I think we can let that go. Yes. If it's something like a period drama, yeah, I'm going to, we'll have to then take that on a case-by-case -case basis, really. I think so. I think so. I'll tell you another great sci-fi film if people haven't seen it is Enemy Mine. Enemy Mine. Mm. Enemy Mine is a great film. It's about two um, two soldiers, pilots from opposing factions in an intergalactic war. They crash on a desolate planet and have to band to cover together and become the best of friends to survive. Okay, that sounds good. Does it? Does the planet do anything weird? Like have earthquakes or? It has earthquakes and like hail rocks and lava. Ooh, and... I like it's, that. Uh, yeah, it's a, it's a good one. It's got Lou Gossett Jr. in it. What about? Has anybody seen Robot Jocks? Well, Robot Jocks. I love Robot Jocks. Robot Jocks is brilliant. Um, I tell you what, there's a lot of it's. You know what? We get really annoyed mm. that there's no good new sci-fi. You know, proper like hard space sci-fi, and you're going, oh, when are they going to make Rendezvous with Rama or something? But actually, we should just go back, shouldn't we? Go back, start mm. from the sort of maybe even 60s. If to be honest, 50s sci-fi is mm -hmm. good too, and then just say, right, let's just reset the clock, pretend we've never seen these, because frankly, we probably so forgot much, them so anyway. So much good old stuff. I tell you what's an excellent adaptation is and the BBC only made two series of it is The Tripods by the BBC The BBC? I, I'd say I've not seen that They made, it was in the 80s, they made two series um, The Tripods of um, from the the, the, the the Tripod trilogy of books about how these very some sort of War of the Worlds aliens took over the planet and they um, suppress technology back to almost medieval times. Ooh, smart bomb. Sorry, there's a noisy smart bomb. Get it out of the way for you. There you go. Yes. Becky's right. V was an excellent series. I mean, it was a very uh... strong allegory for the Nazis, but it was excellent. I quite liked the the new V, and I don't know how much traction that it got. Was, it was quite good, apart from the second series ended on a big cliffhanger, and that was it. Yeah, a bit like um, you know our fa our favourite um, what's it called Firefly. I really like Firefly. Mm -hmm. Bloody fun. Mr. C, you're very right. The tripods. Um, there were three initially three books in it, and the BBC only adapted the first two, so it ended on a cliffhanger. And it's a shame because it was excellent. And Jenny, you're right. It was very War of the World. The tripods was. See, I was just thinking that, actually. I was a bit too embarrassed to say that. And, that, and I'm thinking, oh, hang on, when you were saying the tripods, was I thinking War of the Worlds? No, they're very inspired by War of the Worlds, but it's a very, very good um, sort of series. Oh, you just reminded me of something, by the way. I've got some birthday presents that I've not checked, cashed in yet. Hang on, let me just check this. I've got a, a Silverstone experience in a race car. Let me just check this voucher. Uh... Oh, February of next year, so I've got time. Um, and I think my good wife has bought me tickets. Uh, assume, assume, I'm assume, assume, assume I'll be taking her <laughs> to uh, see the War of the Worlds, the new gen, the next generation. Mm. And I, I tell you what, I really love the War of the Worlds uh, CD. I just all the songs and all of that. It's brilliant. It's absolutely brilliant. If you haven't heard the musical, just listen to mm. it. And who is it who did the voice? It was like um, one of those James Mason or something who's doing the narration. Well, um, it's been redone by Liam Neeson. It's been done by Liam, Liam Neeson. And he's good at it. It's cracking, to be honest with you. Mm. And actually, all of the um, the people singing are all like modern people singing. So it's all got like... Um, 
actually I can't even know any names because I don't know the names of modern people but like one of them from Gary Barlow is doing Richard one of the... Burton was the original Richard Burton there you go um, and even though it's got all of these modern singers they are cracking actually they're really good they're not singing their usual bullshit modern songs that they're famous for they're just doing proper singing if you know what I mean and mm. they're good at it and you think yeah you see that, that's probably you should have shown people that side while you're in the charts <laughs> War of the Worlds got me through a hospital stay. I can bet. Which version, Zebby Dress? Was it the new or the old? But I'm trying to think of um, trying to think of some of the songs. It's, it's I've got such a bad memory these days that it, I've it's... got a list of all the songs here. Of course, we can't hear any for obvious reasons, but we can certainly set it no. out to the tracks. Go ahead. Let me find them on my Wikipedia page. Here yeah. we have. The Eve of the War. Da, 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 da. Cell Common and the Heat Ray. Ah, uh, that's the one where it just it makes these sounds. Because it, yeah, that's the bit about War of the Worlds. You always got the aliens in it. The Artilleryman and the Fighting Machine. Yeah. Whoa. My favourite. Yes, David Essex does sing, and he sings actually on the Artilleryman and the Fighting Machine. Uh, my next track is my favourite from the album, which is Forever Autumn. Oh, brilliant. And then we have Thunder Child. Oh, I love that one. That's that's a, such an awesome thing, because it's like, the, obviously, the so we, so we're talking about songs, but they're just telling the story, aren't we? It's almost like opera. Mm. Um, oh, definitely. But the th Thunder Child is just awesome. It's like, because you're listening to it, and you're, you're kind of excited, because you're just like, yeah, they're like, come on, let's take on this motherfucker with our, our ship. <laughs> and... Mm. Uh, but then it obviously loses. But it's like, gave it a damn good go, didn't it? That's the feeling I got from that song. Thunder cha. Yeah. And we have the red weed. And that was more of a, a like an ethereal sound, isn't it? The red weed. Damn it. I've run out of bullets. The spirit of man. Oh, that's a good one, though, isn't it? The spirit of man. That's, that's with the priest, isn't it? I believe so. Yeah. It's, still... no. it's, it's, a, it's, it's a duet. The Red Weed Part 2. The Red Weed Part 2. And then Brave New World. Ah! With just a handful of men! We'll start all over again! Diddly diddly! <laughs> it's cracking! Absolutely brilliant. Baz is right. Phil Linnett does sing Spirited Man. And then we have Dead London. Dead London. Epilogue Part 1 and Part 2. I'm going to see if there was a War of the Worlds Mega Drive game. <laughs> Unfortunately not. Mm. I think that... I believe, it, I believe there was an uh, Amiga and ST game, though. Well, that might be a game for another day, because it's too has much... Oh, hang on. Duke Nukem 3D for Mega Drive. Hello. Let's have a look, shall we? Um, ah, Duke Nukem 3D for the Mega Drive was a... It was that Brazilian tech toy, did it? Oh, I've just... Oh, here we go. Find it. Tech toy. Mr. C says there was a PC and a PS1 game of War of the Worlds. Well, they will be investigated, sir. The only War of the Worlds game I want to experience is one where you have to do, like, the Black Eyed Peas experience. There's some dancing, a bit of singing, some special moves, you know, to emulate in the tripod. This is freaky. This is freaky what I'm looking at right now, which is the Duke Nukem 3D like loading screen. How exciting. <laughs> I wouldn't get your hopes up about this one. I, I dunno, they've done a it, it's nice like they've taken it's almost as if you got t taken a screenshot and you've just pasted it on the screen. The PC one was an RTS and horrendously buggy, Mr. C says. Ah. Run mode on, run mode off, okay. Is that a strafe? Yes, you've got a strafe and you've got a shoot. That's all you need. Oh, oh, wait, hang on. Which was the strafe button again? So, it moves really good. It's a bit like Wolfenstein, though. I was going to say it looks more like a skinned Wolfenstein than Duke. I've got a Doom, a Doom um, cartridge for the SNES. It might even be boxed, actually. Might have to dig that I out. Think a that, lot. Used, that was Mode 7. Um, or was it Super FX on 
Oh, I, I think it would have to be super effect. What? Mm. This is a tricky bugger. It's by default. It's um, let me just see if there's an option. By default, it's it's turning rather than strafing. Whereas I think you probably want it to be default strafing. Cause there's too many buttons. To, no, all right. Doesn't let you choose. Just go in again. Otherwise, you have to take this wide bank around everything. Andrew Beer says that there was a 2011 War of the Worlds game too, apparently. Side-scrolling action game for the Xbox 360 and the PS3. I'm guessing that's based on the Tom Cruise movie, which I didn't hate. No, no. I don't know. The problem with Tom Cruise is, right, I really like a lot of his movies, if not all of them. But because of the whole Scientology thing, it's tainted. Mm. It's almost like... not. As bad as someone who watching someone who's since become a paedophile. Hang on, hang on. Don't say anything bad about Scientology in the stream. Your uh, your YouTube account will suddenly disappear and your internet will be turned off. Oh, okay. Better they're, not. They're, connect they're connected everywhere. Actually, my screen is starting to get some sort of weird static on it. Yeah, I see. But um, no, but like just to be fair though, you know that is probably one of the reasons he he is, you know gets a lot of grief. Oh yeah, without a doubt. Um, but yeah, I, I did like his um, recent sci-fi things. I, I think there's just so many great films out there. I've, I've got to admit, I've started going to a lot of the older films. Recently, uh, I have been enjoying some of the trends of the late 70s. I watched uh, Roller Coaster and Earthquake, which are proper 70s films with... Uh, Films they don't make anymore. They don't make these kind of. They don't feel the need to tack on a happy ending. Didn't there was a lot of films which were disaster films, weren't they? So I suppose mm. Earthquake was one. There was one where there was the boat. What was the one with the ship that was sinking? Like a. Oh, the Poseidon Adventure. All of those things, and it was just a, it was escape movies in a way, wasn't it? Uh, they were, but uh, Roller Coaster was quite an interesting one. It was about a, a serial killer who was going around theme parks and setting bombs on roller coasters. Ooh, that sounds a bit nasty. Mm. Oh god, what is this? Oh, see, there was Concord too. Concord was actually air was uh, one of the air airport films. Um, this sucks. When you say airport films, was it, was an airport a series? Airport was a series, and airplane was the swoof series. Oh, okay. I didn't know it even had a real thing behind yes, that. Yes, yes. Airport 74 wasn't Concord. I think it was Airport 81 or sort of 79. Um, just looking on Wikipedia. I'm trying to think. Does anybody know what a SNES emulator would sound like? Z SNES is a popular one. I feel the need for SNES now. We've had enough of the old Mega Drive. God, I do apologise for my tardiness in getting this. It's taking time. So, so yes. oh, your fiance is XBA. A purser. A purser. Does he know all the appropriate exit and entry points? So, we had Airport 70, 1970, Airport 75, Airport 77, and Airport 79, also known as Airport 80, the Concorde in the UK. However, the main character in the film, Joe Petroni, played by George Kennedy, his character does take an unusual career path. In the first film, he's the chief mechanic at the airport. Uh, the next film, he's vice president of operations. He's a consultant in the one after that. And then he's chief airline pilot for the Concorde in the last one. Oh. So quite an, un quite an unusual career path. Does sound like one. <laughs> what is... Th oh, I've got Final Burn Alpha on here. Should we have a little looksy, looksy, looksy in Final Burn Alpha? Um, Street Fighter. <laughs> no, I don't. I might not have any software here. What do you need? 
Street Fighter the World War... Oh, do I? No, I do. Apparently. Apparently so. This could be fun. Let's have a look. Is this retro enough? I think it counts. Input. Map the game inputs. Oh, no. It always forgets this. Well, maybe I've saved a preset, have I? Let's see if that works. No. No problem. No problemo. Oh, it counts. Andrew Beer saying, yes, it counts. So let's do it. If we're doing some final burn alpha, that changes everything, doesn't it? So one player coin. Um... Oh, yes. Baz says, tell me, Joey, have you ever seen a grown man naked? <laughs> well, Baz, do you like gladiator movies? Start. Up. Down. Left. <laughs> right. Weak punch, medium punch, strong punch. I do apologise, by the way, if you're watching the whole setup, but it's fine. Boom, that should do the trick. Where did it go? <laughs> Out return doesn't work, obviously, in my copy of Final Burn Alpha. No problem. Let's make that full screen that way. See if we can get some coins in here. Let's do this. Ooh. There we go. It was an excellent strip buzz, and if you, if anyone's not seen uh, a film, it's maybe not as politically correct these days as it could be. The film that the Zuckers who wrote Alien and Naked Gun, etc., wrote before that was a film called The Kentucky Fried Movie, which is like a sketch movie. That sounds familiar, actually. I... Mm. There was a lot of you know, naughty movies, wasn't there, back then? Yes. Right, kick, punch, punch. Yes! The question is, can you still do any of the special moves? I can, but give me a moment to uh, get into the groove of this. <laughs> the weird thing is you find arcade version of Street Fighter different than console ones in how to pull off the move and the ease of pulling off the move. You can't play the I'm playing the arcade one with the control pad. It's very difficult to actually get the moves to work and I think it's to do with you know arcade sticks have gates. Mm. You know the, if if it's like a, an 8 way or a 16 way or what 4 way or whatever like a gearbox a gear yeah. selector and if if you're going through extra things that it's not expecting it won't let you do the move because it's expecting you to say go back down forwards but if it's he's back back left uh, you know like in all those sorts of in between states it can confuse it top secret now top pre secret was that with um chevy chase in it and uh dan Aykroyd? uh no that's spies like us oh. yeah. oh. Top Secret was a Zucker film and it had a young Val Kilmer in it. Oh, Chun Li! You naughty. You naughty minx. What? I, uh oh, I'm having trouble getting these purples out. No, 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 no. Gotta be careful, the old Chun Li. She hasn't got fire, fireball in this version. <laughs> nice. Oh, I do. Oh, so these are, these are like, there's so many films here that I'm gonna have to just add to the list. Mm. <laughs> I like that Bazza says, looks like I picked the wrong week to give up glue sniffing. I tell you what, that um, sort of phrase does pop into your head all the time nowadays, the older you get, because you do seem to be trying to give up stuff all the time, be it diets or whatever. It's like you, the day of your diet is the day that it's someone's birthday and they bring in your favourite cronuts. Oh, cronuts are so good. <laughs> <laughs> they are good, aren't they? Is anybody oh, in... there's a place, place in Cardiff that makes them, and they're just amazing. <laughs> cronut chat. Come on then. What's your favourite cronuts, everybody? Get your cronuts in the in the chat. Let's have a let's have a look. If you, at ever, them. If you ever find your way to Cardiff, there's a place called Cupcake and Bakery, and they make the most amazing artisan cronuts. So I recommend that to the chat artisan anyway. donuts. Now, the problem I have with a lot of cupcakes that are like that it means it's just got shit loads of icing on it what how's their icing ratios I tell you what. Well, there, there's a lot of icing but they are pretty amazing but their cronuts are just incredible booyah 
I'm, I'm doing quite well today on this. I think we go through life trying to give up something, says Jenny. I think you're right, actually, to be honest with you. Do you think we should be the other way and just... It's our culture, isn't it? I think when you go to foreign countries, some of them, they don't care. They just go through life, just trying to live life to the fullest. Not, yeah, yeah, the problem with this country is... Should we start ranty now, Andrew? Is it ranty time? Well, let's go, go go for the rant. Go on. Oh, I didn't even go get my booze. That would have made the rant better. But we'll get some booze. And then... <laughs> let's see if we can do a little warm-up rant. The problem with this country is that everybody lives for their retirement. Have you noticed... Mm. We all, it's like we're all, it's like religious people who are who are putting up with a life of shit because one day when they get to heaven it's going to be all good. We're like that with our retirements here. And um, nobody really thinks what does retirement mean in the UK. It just means more miserable weather, more crop, you know, it's, it's always horrible. Um, but we've just no money. And it's like, mm. we, uh, you don't get that abroad. They don't cut care about pensions and any of that nonsense they're like no I'm going out and having some tapas motherfucker <laughs> <laughs> whereas we're like no we're just gonna have a cup of soup and watch last the summer wine and it'll all be good when we retire everything's gonna be great when we retire you know what? when you retire you're gonna be tired not interested in any of those projects and not have the resources to probably do anything nor the energy why what well it's a con well, actually Actually, I've got to say something about retirement. It's about my father. My father's worked every day of his life since he was... Man and boy. Well, since he was 17. I mean, he's, he's quite high in the business he works in. But, but, he turned 70 last year and he still works. He works three days a week. Reason being, speaking to my mother, my mother has said she doesn't ever want him to stop working. It's not for any pension kind of reason or uh, financial reason. It's she believes he will drop down dead. Yeah, I, I get that totally, because a lot of people don't mm. sit and do do nothing. Mm. But, you know, I'm guessing, were you a, a family that holiday? You probably still did them when they did stuff. Not as a family, not as a family, no. no. Oh, no. Sounds, we, sounds we, a bit yeah. like me, <laughs> growing up. My family were very, my parents were very career oriented when I was growing up. We went on holiday very rarely. Um, I think the last time I went on a proper holiday with my parents, I was about four. I was about 12 or 13. Um, we are going away as a family again this year for the first time in... Whoa! Not doing 20 well. Odd, in 20 odd years. But that's only because uh, we had a sit down as a family. I spoke to my parents because my grandmother uh, died last year. She was in her, in her 90s. And she said one of her regrets was that she didn't get to travel more. Um, as a family, my, my wife and my niece and I, we've been to Mexico oh. uh, several, several times. And we said to my parents, would you like to come to Mexico with us this time? So it's almost like us taking them. And, did, taking, and, and did they take you we, up on that? They have, yeah. I mean, they're, financially, they're paying for themselves, etc. But it's more... Uh, See you, Jenny. Night, night. night. Later, Jenny. Us being this sort of the experienced, more experienced travellers and you know the, the the safety feeling because they've never been they my, my father's been to america several times but my mother's never been sort of long haul um never been anywhere so they want to see sort of this you know caribbean paradise so some, something to do before they die it's kind of ticking ticking off their list i guess no i i enjoy we didn't um, really go on holidays and stuff as kids to be honest, mm. I never even knew how to order food in the restaurant until I was like university age. It was like a new scary experience. So that's how uh, we were upbringing. And um, yeah, we've tried to do more when my children came along, mm. you know, to do more family holiday type stuff. And it's great. It's fine, you know. Um, but I will admit, um, as you say, career oriented, work oriented. I don't. This week's half term. Mm. I'm not with my kids, you know. It's it's not um, it's not ideal, but at least now I can appreciate it more. You know, maybe I might have a moan at my parents. People in the chat might have done this as a kid. You know, you never took us on holiday, or you never took us out to eat. But now mm. I like appreciate it the other way. That's because yep. maybe they had no money, and that's because they were working all the time to just put food on the table for the kids and give us Super Nintendo so we could play bloody Street Fighter. Do you know what I mean? Exactly. Jenny's saying her man wants to take her to Barbados. Go to Barbados, Jenny. Yeah, Go. why not? Why not indeed? If, you, if you've never been to the Caribbean before, it's amazing. 
Jenny's saying, how many kids have I got? I've got the p that, a set. That you know of. <laughs> yeah, I could have said. Wah, 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 wah. I'm going to Sid James laugh. Yeah. Oh, I tell you what. The... Ah, your Honda didn't like getting beaten the first time round, I tell you. Oh, McBeam has joined the chat as well. Hello, McBeam. Oh, McBeam. Hello. Wow. McBeam, I'm going to be here a while, I think, anyway, so you, not, don't worry. It's not like you just joined the stream and we've run away like we usually do. How is it over there in the across the Atlantic? Oh, look at that. He couldn't take my skills that time, though. Right. Hang on. I already did douse him. What's going on? That's no good. So, Andrew, were you a Street Fighter player as a youth? I was. I was a big Street Fighter 2 player on the SNES. Street Fighter 2 Turbo Hyper Fighting. Oh, we should have a game next time you're here. What's what? On the SNES? We'll get a SNES out. On the out. SNES. I'm a bit rusty, but I'll see if I can dust the... I've but got um, my brother kindly uh, give, got me a SNES Mini that I've not even unboxed. Mm. Well, I might have unboxed it briefly on the camera that you'd have mm -hmm. seen, but yeah, I've not actually even plugged it in and tried it because, um, well, because I don't want my kids ruining it mainly. But uh, don't touch my stuff. Don't, don't my touch stuff. my toys. But that <laughs> might be a good platform to try to relive the you know mm. SNES experience on. McBeam says it's rainy. It's rainy here too, I'm afraid. It's humid, sticky, and raining here in snow. And that's just in Andrew Dalton's pants. That's right. That's right. And thank God for my portable aircon. Is at home. I've um, more or less given away all our eight aircons because they were so infrequently used. I kind of got fed up of um, tripping over them. No, I used use ours quite a bit. Uh-oh, 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 my... There we go, we've got the Lexus. And in fact, I've actually just fitted aircon to my parents' house in... Uh, in. Hello? Are you still there? I'm here. You you broke up there, something about fitting I've, aircon. I've just fitted um, proper split aircon to my parents' house in, in Wales. It's fun weekend. setting those up, isn't it? Because it, was it the... Did you do mm. it yourself or you got someone I, it, it used to be strange enough it used to be my house which had aircon the aircon unit got worn out and um i refitted because all the holes and everything were there i like how they come pre-charged so you like you yeah. hope your pipe works done proper because <laughs> yeah. when you undo that <laughs> valve all your gas pisses out and you're like no <laughs> it's just a case of being methodical but it's it's good it works well for my parents my parents need aircon in the in the bedroom um my mother had thyroid cancer about 10, 15 years ago, and one of the side effects of it, because she no longer has a thyroid gland, is she has trouble regulating her body temperature. Mm. You know what? So. Now, now you're talking, that's something that I could be really thinking about fitting now, in that mm. um, we are centrally heated off oil, which isn't good anyway, because you can run out of oil, and we also have yes. um, um, multi-fuel. Mm -hmm. um, but for me, in my uh, recent, you know, my old age, I uh, I now feel the cold terribly, and mm. oh no, did I just not continue? No, no. Oh well, maybe an opportunity to try a different character. Um, let's try Guile. Guile's always a tricky one, and um, my long-suffering wife will tell you it drives her nuts because I'm too hot too cold you know like i'm normally mm. cold to be honest with you the old electric blankets don't do it for, and i i don't, I don't know why because it's not temperature related because i can it can be very hot in the room but i will still feel cold so i think it's humidity related and i think acs are the perfect way to have a controlled humidity yes um, I, I think the uh, important thing is to think that air conditioning is not so much air conditioning just to think of it as climate control yeah like you have in the car but well you just Which set is a better way to yeah you 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 want to set it for 20 degrees 21 degrees or whatever and then leave it to the unit to manage whether or not it increases the temperature or 
uh, or decreased it. McBeam says, I is older than you all. How old are you, McBeam? I think McBeam did mention it. Uh, I don't know if you're in the thing. And McBeam, um, if I, um, I'm not mistaken, sir, is a very good Atari connection. Very interesting Atari mm. connection. In fact, McBeam, I think you were on a voice chat last time. You might have been in the voice in Discord telling us your tales about Steinberg. I believe so. Come on, Please Ryan. join the chat. Please join the chat again if you wish to McBeam. In fact, if anyone wishes to join the Discord chat. Oh, how do you... Oh, bugger. I thought I was going to do my McBeam Sonic is six... kick. 63 years old. 63 wow. years young. Exactly. 63 is the new 40. I think you're right, though, to be honest. To be fair, it is. Oh! I tell you what, when Guile does a hard kick in someone's head in the game, it does look like it hurts. Yes. Do you play Mortal Kombat? It doesn't really look like it hurts, but this looks like it hurts. So Andrew Beer says he starts complaining when it reaches 26. Yeah, I get. I can. I can sit in a room at easily. Well, actually, I'm probably the opposite of you in a way, because I was going to say I could have it minimum 26 and say to my wife, "Yep, yeah, this is fine," and she's like, "Are you mad?" <laughs> I'm that dog oh. drinking the cup of tea in a fire. Oh, that'll be too too hot for me. I like to be cold. But I mean, but this is it now. Look, look I'm going to tell you. I don't. I find the temperature thing here. I've got the flare. We could turn it on. I bet you it's only maybe 23 degrees here now. 22, and I feel totally fine. Too warm for me. Too warm. Mm -hmm. But I could be. I'll, Go ahead. I I will. When we had snow, I was walking around outside barbecuing in shorts and t-shirt. You're making me feel hungry. I and you're making get... me imagining you in your shorts and a t-shirt with a sausage in your hand. Exactly. I just don't I just don't get cold. I like to be cold. Oh I don't remember in my youth ever wearing a jacket or coat. I was outside, like you say, working on cars in jeans and a t-shirt all year round. Never bothered me at all. But now it does. Watcher says he hates the heat too. Well, sorry, forgive me, Watcher, if you're assuming you're male. Please don't let me misgender you uh, if I am. Uh, saying hate the heat too and prefer the cold weather. I, I certainly prefer the cold weather. I prefer winter. I like it to be dark early. I like the dark and the cold. Do you? Mm. But you don't like the rain, surely? Not too bothered about the rain. I can't stand. I find winter very depressing. I like the winter. Oh, so you don't suffer from uh, sad? No, no. If anything, I get more depressed around February time when it's more when it starts getting a bit brighter. Oh dear. Mm -hmm. I would. I. That means you are the perfect, uh, you know, Briton, as it were, because uh, oh. it suits you. Whereas for me, I am the imperfect Briton because I cannot stand the ratio of miserable to good weather. <laughs> <laughs> Spring and autumn are my favourite times of year, says Mr. Andrew Beer. And uh, Mr. McBeam. C loves rain. McBeam, you've joined the wrong Discord audio chat, dude. You're in general talk in the Patreon section. You need to be joining stream chat in the regular section. Right, so we failed with Ken. We failed with Guile. Um, Try Zangief, because no one can complete the game with Zangief. No. I never have, actually. But I have completed it with Dal Sim, who was a real crap character. Let's try to figure out what Chun-Li can do in this version. Do you remember the different versions of different moves? Certainly do. Head stomp. Which is the head stomp? That one. There you go. Now I'm set. Andrew Beer says, Spring and Autumn is my favourite time of the year. Spring and Autumn. Mm, his favourite time of the year. It's forever, forever autumn. Right. <laughs> Andrew always loved this time of year. <laughs> <laughs> Missed all that. Oh, no. Some, yeah. Not too warm or too cold. I like to be cold. I'm wondering if there's the possibility for some sort of game. Shall we invent the gaming tub? So it's like a hot tub with a seat in it, but you can put it in mm -hmm. front of a desk and just sit bubbling away. Oh, I've got the hot tub outside. I just 
cl that was on my typical. I have a day. I have a day off from work, and uh, the wife gives me a list of Chores. jobs to do. Yeah. What's the? Um, are you a chlorine or a bromide fan? Bromide. I do like the old bromide. It does have a funny smell, but only because we're not used to it like we are chlorine. Mm -hmm. Oh, bloody hell. Shit, 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 shit. However, don't do what I did once, which was open the uh, tub of shock and sniff it when it was all dust vapour coming out of it. Uh, you got the other... Oh, what does that smell like? Oh, inhaled half the dust. It's a, it's a bit of a pain, isn't it, the whole chemically oh, side of it? I could it do is. without that. But it you know, it's weird. I was got... talking to somebody... Go ahead. I'll... And I'll tell you my story. If you've, I, I know someone with one of the proper, proper hot tubs, and he's got quite an expensive one. He bought one of the proper fixed ones, and his has the cartridges that slot in. It does all the management of the chemicals itself. Yeah. And he said that's quite easy to look after. It's grim though. Those cartridges are grim when you take them out, aren't they? Yeah. They that that grey sludge in them. Mm. Like, what is grey sludge? That skin. Hair oil, body jizzes, I don't know, juice. Well, what's amazing is the amount of bubbles you get in a hot tub, though, from the laundry detergent. That's right, yeah, your shorts. Mm. That's right. Come on. We're doing quite well in the old Street Fighter. I will say, though, last time, last holiday we had in Mexico, the, uh, the suite we had, had a private hot tub on the uh, roof of our apartment. And it had sea views. It was pretty wonderful. I'll put a picture in the Discord chat for anyone who wants to see later. But um, the hot tub actually been plumbed in to the building's hot water feed. Oh, that's good. So you could just drain it. it and it had a drain. It had a drain plug fitted to it. So you, literally, every time you used it, you'd ask your private butler, and he'd fill the hot tub for you. Brilliant. So you could just use it as a bath. You could do, but the shower in the well, we had an enormous bath in the room. But the shower in the room, you could have had a party for three in, three or four in there. It was huge. Had had a large bench and double rainfall, like double rainfall things in it. Yeah, they're quite good. These old rainfally things, aren't they? Mm -hmm. Come on, so come on, come on. So, question to the chat: shower or bath? Hmm. For me, it's a bath. Always. Shower. Bath I don't a day. Feel, I don't feel clean after a bath. You know why? You're not putting a cap of Dettol in it. That's what I do. Old <laughs> school. Andrew Beer's a shower. He's, Andrew Beer's got stuff to do, though. He hasn't got time to waste. Baz He's... says neither. Do you like Baz, do you have a horse wash? Flannel on it. Flannel. And a, and a sponge. <laughs> you know, uh, Andrew, you should find that link to that thing we found in America for wiping your ass, where it's a stick with a. But you put your tissue paper on the end of a stick. Have you, oh yeah. There's a good YouTube video on that. We should be. You know, what I'm going to do next time, Andrew. I'm going to I'm going to set up a, a stream to you on Skype and have it in the corner of my window, and right. then that way, when you do your research uh, as a your producer, you can. Put up the little clips and the <laughs> links in the little window. That photos. Of and yeah, all the right. photos we're talking about. Exactly. Bell says, "Wipe on, wipe off." <laughs> no, what, what? One wipe to to to. What is it? One to clean and one to polish. You got to right. you got to keep polishing that ring piece. I cannot mm. leave the room till there's nothing there on the paper. That's my rule. And Mr. C says, "I used to be a bath guy, but having a shower for a while." I am now a shower dude. Ooh. The problem is with the shower, mm. how do you um, listen to your uh, you know, audio books? <laughs> I take my phone in the shower. Or read the internet. Oh, is that what you just I take can. it in? I take my phone in. It's waterproof. So you just put it on the side. Oh, you just literally take it in and give it a wash with you? Yeah. Mm. And Andrew says Bluetooth speakers, which is another thing I've thought about doing as well. They sell some very nice waterproof Bluetooth speakers in Amazon, as Amazon sells everything. Mr. C says using his imagination. <laughs> to be fair, though, I guess I'm not really in. I'm not a long shower person. I, I'm not really in there that long to to worry about. Well, it. in my in my old house, I used to have one of these uh, steam room shower cabinet things. It had a built-in uh, touchscreen LCD TV in it. They're good. They're like having a shower in the inside of a fridge. <laughs> they are. They are. With all the L with all the cheap L Chinese LEDs all down the wall of it, oh. and uh, I remember you'd. Uh, it, was, it was good. So 
Go on, sorry, you yeah. Could, uh, you could watch. I had it wired up to Sky as well. I had a, I had a, a TV link on the outside of it and a Sky remote hidden in the bathroom. So you could change the channel set where you wanted to watch and uh, have, watch, a, watch a film or a TV show in the uh, in the shower or the steam room. Mm. So you could have a damp steam. Mm. And speaking of that, I've... Uh, You'll be you'll be proud of me what I've done. I've figured out the uh, how to get decent audio inside the sauna. Ah, cool. How? So, in the room where the TV where the sauna is, there's a, a TV with a fire stick in it. It's got an optical output. I've got an optical output that converts it to an RF to a jack analog jack plug, and then I've got an FM transmitter. Ah, into that. nice and easy. Mm. Uh, how long are you in the shower that you need a TV in there? <laughs> I like a long shower. Oh, I'm just going. I'm doing lame moves with Dowson, by the way. I can't seem to get any of his yoga flame, yoga fire out. I tell you what, this game was pretty good at the time, wasn't it? Really, it was. It was an amazing port for the time. And it changed. Um, Street Fighter One was rubbish. But this really set the seat, the, you know, the standard, I think, for all the fighting games that followed. Oh, it certainly did, certainly did. But what's really annoying, if you ever try the uh, Neo Geo, it seems to be only fighting games. It's a weird, weird old platform. Yeah, but it was a very, very strong Japanese. No, 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 no! Yes! I shall return imminently. I'm just going to grab another drink because I'm getting thirsty. Ah, oh, no, I have no such option. Tell you what, douse him, he's. He's doing it though. He's he's getting there. So McBeam, you can't get Discord chat to work. All you have to do is click on the room where you see us in. There's some names. It'll be Andrew Dalton and it'll be myself. And every time I talk, you'll see the little circle flashing. That's the room you want. And if you're on your phone, I don't know if you're connecting via phone or from. Uh, no, 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 no. Um, the PC. There's two slightly different ways of doing it, so I could tell you which one if I knew. Oh, I tell you what, it's torture. And I honestly finished. I finished Street Fighter with Dalsim, and it was like the happiest day of my life because it was really difficult. I don't know what it is. I think it's character just it's it's a bit slow. But it can be good. You know, in the right hands, he's all right, but it's like a glutton for punishment. You really Okay, let's try to do some yoga flame, yoga fire, you know. It's just not getting them out. What's the difference between Discord chat and this chat? Well, Bazza, two things. One Discord chat, you have the text chat, which is not, it's, it's no, it's not, it's good, but not good in a stream. It's better to have this chat in the stream because we can read it, of course, on the screen. But if you are in the Discord chat, you can actually have voice chat. You can just be talking like Andrew does. So Andrew joined the Discord chat. You can hear him telling his, telling us his tales. Um, but it's, it's more than, uh, we're more than happy. I'm more than happy for anybody to jump in and, and want to, uh, give their input while we're um, playing and uh, in fact I'm just having a look here because I think we've had enough Street Fighter but we've got a bit of Strider, Samurai Showdown, I don't know if we've got all of these these ROMs. Ah <gasps> oh, Neo Mr. Do, I, I kind of don't like Neo Mr. Do, it's kind of lame. Um, I have returned. Dungeons and Dragons, I think that is a fighting game. Let's have a look, shall we? The Shadow of... What was that? Mr. No, probably Final Burn Alpha, if you've got it at home, or you don't, is that um, it does seem to require this bloody setting of your joysticks for each sort of profile. Attack. Jump. Well, McBeam is saying he can't get the chat to work, but I can see he's in the Patreon section chat room. And he's off mute, etc. He's just in the wrong room. Do you want to jump over there, Andrew, and steer him into this one? Maybe. See if he can hear me. Let me see. So, which do I want? Thief, dwarf, fighter. I think I'm, I'm always the kind of the, the roguish thief. This looks good. I wonder if it's a bit like Golden Axe. Help me! 
go. This is obviously trying to make the Dungeons and Dragons IP a bit trendier. Well, I've spoken to him. He didn't reply, so fingers crossed. <laughs> I think I've set my controls up. When I push right, it kicks. <laughs> yeah, but it does kind of go right sometimes. All right, let's 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 sort the controls out. We're not going to get anywhere in this. Map game inputs. Let's start again. So, coin, start, up, down, left, right. Attack, we're going to be Y, jump, B, select, A. And use X. So they all look like they're mapped to individual controls, so we shouldn't be. No, it's just lame. Ah, um, Beam heard me, but nothing. It's just your micro. Check your microphone sources in Discord, sir. I think maybe when I was pushing right and it was kicking, I think that's kind of what the game does. Because if I push left, it kicks when you're near something. Weird. Right, so what else have you got in this? So you seem to have some sort of magic spells. Look, dagger. No, there's just something wrong with the controls, I think. Bugger, though. This looks good fun as well. Wouldn't mind trying this one. Still, let's persevere with bad controls. Do you, um, Andrew, have you been listening mm -hmm. to any of the... Um, no, I can't stand this. Um... Uh, off to be the wizard series on the Audible. I think we were talking about that before. I have not. No, I've not been. Past couple of weeks, not been in the car, so I haven't really listened. It's really, I intend to listen when I'm going on long journeys. That tends to be the the best time to listen, doesn't it? To to things. I find it hard to listen to an audio. I can do a podcast in bits, like if I'm nipping ten minutes on the road to Tesco or whatever. But uh, no, I can't. I can't do an audio in ten minute chunks. Ooh, this is a good game, by the way. Alien vs. Predator. I think this seems topical. Right, do we want to be Predator or Humans? Hmm. I think we'll start off with a Predator. They're all. Gr this is a great game, by the way, if anybody watching has not played it. Oh. Ah, I think I figured it out. Hello. Hello, sir. Hey, McBeam. Well done. Uh, that was... if, if, if you're anything if persistent, because I think you have so much trouble connecting in any of the various ways, but I'm glad you've managed today. <laughs> Thank you, sir. How's life treating you? It's going. <laughs> it's still going. Yeah. It's relentless. Now that I got you guys on chat, um, how do I get to watch what you're doing? Just go on um, YouTube? Yeah, go, YouTube go on YouTube out. and just mute it. Otherwise, it, it'll drive okay. you nuts. Because I didn't want to drive you guys nuts. <laughs> If anyone wishes to join the uh, the Discord, I will just post a link to the Discord in the chat. That's a bloody good idea. Now we forget to do that. Don't we? Hmm. My I think problem. It... My problem was I didn't click on the, the Steam Cat icon. Ah. Look at this thing. Aliens is such a good IP, isn't it? Really. It's a great, great IP, great film. And to be fair, I think Predator is too, but it was mistreated. Mm. But then like Aliens, the first two movies are great. Yeah, Predator, mm. same thing. First two movies are great. As far as I, and to be honest, it's still got um, uh, Hudson in it, right? <laughs> yeah. And I've got to be honest, let's be honest, on the other streams, Aliens, Colonial Marines, it's a bad game, but it's a fun game for a stream. I wish it didn't crash though. That was disappointing, wasn't it? You can't. Well, apparently, we shouldn't be touching the graphics settings. Right. 
because that mod fixes the graphics settings and apparently it causes it to crash. Uh, Fairfighter did some excellent research into it and we were causing it to crash. Okay, well I feel I, I feel we'll give it another go. Mm -hmm. And if it's if it kind of gets too tedious, I think Unreal Tournament 2004 looks like the next co-op game we'll be on because we can play a massive co-op versus bots. Um, well, could we play Voyager Elite Force something on Honor Guard? I don't know. That seems to involve me having to buy yet another game. No, so... no, no, sir. No. Oh, okay. All right. Well, then, yes. Then I'm happy to try it. Yes. So Mr. C says, Mr. C says, I love Predator One and Two, and they were great. But Predator Two, though, I mm -hmm. think is really was really good and not given the credit it deserved. Mr. C wants to know, could he join the Unreal uh, 2004 session? You certainly can, sir. You can. It's uh, it will be unadvertised and impromptu, but if you, you can join it as soon as it's going. I think also in Unreal, it's easy enough for people just to jump in as well. And my favourite, there's probably going to be quite a lot of assaults, because I do like the old assault missions. So tell me about this uh, Star Trek game, Andrew. What does that involve? Well, Elite, Elite Force is basically... Um, well, Elite Force 1 is set on Voyager, Elite Force 2 is set on the Enterprise E, and you are basically a Federation kind of commando team mm -hmm. uh, taking on things like the Borg. Oh, okay. So are you are you like a type of character that you don't see in the TV show? You certainly are. Are you like what were they called? Like Unit Three or something? Remember there was a no, yeah, no they're a fictional fictional division created just for the game series called the Elite Force, and they are like a commando squad created. You're not part of um, Section Thirty Four. No, you're not part of that. But it's a great fun game. It's got all the proper voice acting, and it can be patched up. It's based on the Unreal Engine as well. Can I be Tuvok? Tuvok is in it, but I believe you can't play as Tuvok. No. Oh. Tuvok or not Tuvok? He can be three Vok. <laughs> <laughs> and it does have seven of nine in it. Oh, that's cool. There we go, and we're out. We're out of the alien l lift. I was uh, really enjoying, by the way, that link I sent on U from YouTube, which was the making of Aliens documentary. Oh, I, I watched that. It's good. I could not help myself but watch it all. And it's amazing all of the practical effects. And you know what? Doesn't it make you proud to be British? It certainly does. And there's a connect. There is a connection. Uh, a British connection uh, to video gaming and aliens. Really? Mm -hmm. Chunks of it were filmed at Battersea Power Station. Really? Mm -hmm. uh... Which is also where they filmed the Axis chemical scenes for Batman, the first Batman film. Which is also where they filmed big chunks of Games Master Series 2 on the oil rig, oh. which was actually Battersea Power Station. Well, I never. But we know how to make go. movies here, don't we? Even, like, Prometheus, which is weird. People really shit on Prometheus, but I thought that was great. I love Prometheus. So... I don't like it that much. It's a very beautiful looking film. Which, but what don't you like about it? Let's critique it. Welcome, anybody who's just coming into the stream, to Movie Critique Time, where we critique movies whilst playing movie adaptations of arcade games. Go ahead. So what I didn't like, what I didn't like about Prometheus was, I just felt that they were pretty rubbish scientists for a start. Considering they're supposed to be the best of the best, they didn't. I don't think they particularly observed the kind of protocols you would around infections, etc. Um, the fact that the cartographer, who had the uh, automatic mapping drones built in his wrist controller somehow was the one they chose to get lost even though he had a, a, a full map of how to get out of the alien spaceship attached to him um, people didn't know how to run sideways uh, was a big thing there's just just a lot of things what's about, weird it, though I, I, I didn't notice any of that I just it's really weird I yeah. just I, I guess I'd, I had just put on my disbelief filter 
I thought it was it a beautiful, beautiful looking film. The but I just felt. What did you think about the Medibot scene, though? Come on. What do you I mean? Never thought, to do? The Medibot, the, 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 the Medibot that was configured for a man and somehow did an abortion on her. Well, it, forget that part, though. Wasn't it awesome? <laughs> that was cool. That was cool. Yeah, as Andrew Beer says, the Prometheus school of running away. So you've got an incredibly long yet narrow thing falling on top of you. So instead of running swiftly left or right or diagonally, you run directly into its path. Oh, so this is the big ship that was rolling around. <laughs> yes. I tell you what, I'm not doing well here. So, apart from that... So was there a sequel? Did they make a sequel to that? They did. And what was that like? Alien Covenant. Oh, so I think I might have seen that. Hang on. I might see it on an aeroplane. What was it about? Can you... um, basically, you catch back up with David from the Prometheus, and it's about this convoy ship in space going to colonise this planet, and they pick up a distress signal and end up meeting aliens, basically. I, it sounds really familiar to me. It sounds like... It came was, out it, year. was it like... Um, oh, hang on. Was it like... It was almost like a reimagining of Prometheus or something. Very similar to that, it, but it was, it, was, it, it was a bad film. It didn't really follow on. Oh, yeah, 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 it was bad. Now I remember, now I remember. Right, okay. Spoiler alert. If you haven't seen it, then I'm going to spoil it. Um... Okay, so the David, who is the android now, now I remember. That's right. right? Now, uh, they go along to this other prometheus -y planet, which isn't the original one from Prometheus, and they find David, and he's like got long hair, and he's like he's been around there for ages. Uh, and then you have the goody David going, all right, mate, and he's, he senses there's something a bit weird with this one. Um, uh, and he's a bit weird because he's mental, and he's gone proper psycho, and he's... He's sort of done in the woman who survived. A bit like Alien 3, was it? Where you had that... Uh, all Alien of, All Alien. of the original people are dead. You know, uh, yeah. deus ex machina type thing where it's really convenient to kill everybody who um, it was in the previous one. That... It, that was... It was an okay movie for an aeroplane movie. But it, it definitely... They could have done better. Yeah, it wasn't. And it was predictable, it wasn't, wasn't it? The ending was predictable too. That was the worst part. It wasn't a wasn't a great movie. I've seen a lot better. If you want to see some great sci-fi, uh, I suggest watching Moon. Oh, Moon with Sam uh, Rockwell. Yes. I love Sam Rockwell too. And did you watch the sequel to Moon on Netflix, which was Mute? I've not watched that one yet. Because it's actually a trilogy, isn't it? And I can't remember what the first movie in that. Thing, but um, what do you think about uh, Sam Rockwell as an actor in general? He's fantastic. He's fantastic. He was great in Galaxy Quest. How about the? Is it Seven Psychopaths or something? Yeah, he's also great in uh, Three Billboards Outside Ebbing, Missouri. Ooh. Now, something I do like about Mr. Rockwell mm -hmm. is that he. He obviously likes his dancing because he always tries to fit in a Charleston somewhere. And even if you think of his ca character Zaffold Bieberbrox in um, Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy, he's always doing a little bit of a dance. And I think he even does the bit of a dance in uh, Moon. He dances in Iron Man too. Does he really? Oh, he does! So it's his, like his signature now. If he's in a movie, mm -hmm. he has to dance. Mm -hmm. And interestingly enough, though, look at his hands. He's got interesting hands, and that's all I'll say on the matter. So if you don't know any hand facts about Sam Rockwell, now you do. Well, now you, now you know Jan, that there's... Jan Verrett says, greetings from Belgium. Keep, Belgium. Keep wow. on gaming. Wow. Fantastic. And Mr. C says, I liked Moon much more than I expected. I found it to be really surprising, because I knew nothing about it going into it. Did you find that Moon... The bit that was Moon, that really made Moon, it wasn't just Sam Rockwell, of course, because it was Gertie. And Gertie was brilliant. Unfortunately, voiced by a kind of 
not pedo, but nonce. I don't know. You, you got to correct me on that one. Right. Well, I alleged, alleged, which spoils it a little bit for me. But however, he could be dubbed out the film quite easily. <laughs> Would that be okay then? Yeah. But the character of Gertie was a good character, you know. That's that's the funny thing, you know. Let's let's put aside whatever alleged things the actor's done and all this sort of stuff. Um, Gertie relayed significant emotion despite only having a TFT screen to do it and a few emoticons. Um, and what I really liked by the end of that movie was that I felt that Gertie was trying to help... I can't remember the name of the character, actually, that Sam Rockwell was playing. I think it was Sam. Maybe it was just Sam. You think you might be right. Um, did you feel that Gertie was playing... Yeah. Obviously straining the core directives to... Do you know what I mean? Yes. Yeah. Gertie was trying to... Well, Gertie knew, because of course Gertie knew the, the truth of the horror. And Gertie would have experienced all the, the generations of Sam. Um, oh, hang on, hang on, we're getting into very spoilerific territory. Yeah, okay, let's... Actually, I like Moon more than I like the other films, so I don't want to even spoil it. And It's two thing, but it's very good, by the way. District 9 was another excellent film. Oh, I love that, because it features, of course, my favourite, which is Mech type armaments well there's an interesting thing in district 9 that uh not a lot of people picked up on and it may factor into the sequel what his wife that? is pregnant uh, okay interesting pregnant she didn't become so, pregnant during his thing though right not no 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 she became well i don't know maybe possibly we don't know because in the footage of his wife, I don't think she did during that era, but in the footage of his wife being interviewed, if you look in the background on her mirror in the bedroom, there are a series of ultrasound scans. Ah, interesting. But now something that was interesting about that movie, though, was the real leap of imagination in it, mm. or suspend, <laughs> suspending disbelief. Was though the biological um, effects of that fluid that they obviously used to power oh, magic, magic blue MacGuffin juice? Um, I think it's very odd that it could. Um, I'm trying. To, it's very hard to try to think of a technology that would rely on this fluid that would obviously contain the DNA of the host species. It was so weird, wasn't it? But then again, their technology was connected with their DNA, if you remember, because their guns could only be operated, their weaponry, machinery could only be operated by people of their species. So they're kind of, it's, it may be their, it's their like life force in a way, they, their energy source is their, mm. it's like it's running off liquid. their blood or whatever. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, and that's the thing, but also what I really liked about that, the fact that, as one of my friends said to me, watching it, the spaceship has the most incredible medical technology because they, because uh, the alien says to him, well, "If we go up to the ship, we can, I can re, I can restore you back to normal instantly. No, no problem at all with medical equipment." Mm. But the, but it shows the the, the it's the, the political commentary of the film is society was only interested in the weapons and profiting from the weapons rather than the medical advances. And, the, and yeah, and I guess. There was the weird thing as well because the aliens were um, themselves slaves of that alien species, weren't they? They weren't. Yeah. So I don't know if there was a officer class on that ship either. So it'd be nice if they, they could won't. elaborate on that. But uh... yes. then again, it reminds me a lot of the film Alien Nation. Oh, that was good. The TV shit series was okay as well, actually. Don't know which came first. Alien Nation, by quite a large, large amount. Ah, there we go. Back to being a predator. That's what you want. Oh no! Overheating. Did you ever watch? Um, 
on Netflix they've got something called The Expanse. Uh, I've seen it, but I've not seen it. I mean, I know of the show. What's weird about when I watch things like The Expanse, they kind of give me an Alien Nation vibe, a V vibe, a Total Recall vibe. It's really funny, isn't it? It's, some of these tropes are used too frequently. But something I did enjoy, and someone can tell me what it was called, um, I really liked the Judge Dredd uh, movie with um, Doctor in Star Trek guy in the reboot. Oh, yes, yes. And I always thought that would be an amazing TV series. They should just do a Judge well, they Dredd. Are, they are talking about that. But he was in, after Judge Dredd, I'm sure, I'm sure it came after, he was in a TV series about a policeman who had an android um, sidekick. Yes. And it was almost Judge Dredd, his character. But I can't remember what the hell it's called and or if they can, you know, just stopped making it. Was, it was made by... They did stop making it. It was almost human. Almost human. Oh, and it was good. Damn it. Very good, but 13 episodes and cancelled. Really shame. I thought it was just really getting going. And that was a really gritty Judge Dredd-type world, but it's almost like the prototype for a Judge Dredd series. Oh, I can pick up a pulse rifle here, can I? No. Oh, there we go. Let's do this thing. So, Andrew, how's your BBC going? Have you... Uh, Gone any further on that? I haven't done much with it yet. I'm waiting for the um, the I/O kit to arrive for the master to fix the the bias. But the the BB the BB is good. But I'm going to pull. I'm going to bring it down to you next time I come down, and you can have my ROM boards. <gasps> Ooh. Mm. I would like to. Um... The problem is I've only got enough space here to get one machine out at a time, so the Atari ST has been sitting here since I did its Qmana disk drive fix. Oh! Now, that's an interesting thing. I don't remember if I've published the video or not yet, but I did a hardware mod on this Atari ST. Mm. And it was very satisfying. Um, and that's why it's sitting here. But that's fully tested now, so I don't really need to keep that out. So I might have to switch back to the B because there was some hardware hacking I wanted to do with that. And um, perhaps we need to speak to young Gary and see if he's. I think I don't know if he's got an ST. He might have. No, he's got his Falcon. He's got his Falcon and ST and uh, something. Something. Uh, he's got a few other machines and potentially something very soon uh, yeah. very exciting that you know about so um, Andrew Beer says what was the hardware mod well I have the uh, Atari ST and it's I, I got an external hard disk drive for it sorry floppy drive to run run with it and I have an internal GoTech so I wanted to run all of these public domain disks and, and games and things but the problem is a lot of those expect to boot. You know, they've got these fancy bootloaders, if you remember, like all these crack things and whatnot. They have fancy bootloaders. Um, so I was unable to run those. So I was definitely not going to put a floppy drive back in the ST because someone already cut the case before I got it and it would be a mess. So I've uh, modified the hardware in the ST so that I could switch between the internal and external drive because it's just a, a chip select, basically. So imagine the address lines are hooked up to both devices. The internal and external drives are hooked up by the same address lines at the same time. And then there's a chip select which says drive A now, access, and then it will flick to drive B and it will just set, set those two lines. So I've got a switch, a double pole switch, which will... Um, basically swap those lines over so anytime I can swap A and B around and what's really fun when you're in uh, gem you can actually do it in real time as long as you're not accessing the drive you can flick the switch midway and literally see your A when you double click on A it will show you the contents of one thing switch it over double click on A and it will show you the other so it's really fun and really cool um, but it just makes booting that old software now Plausible. Well, I see uh, young Robert Taylor has joined the uh, oh, chat, so yeah. 
He can get himself in the Discord as well. Young Robert Taylor. Oh, let's see. Same. Fair fight's got his ST in. Fair fight. I can't remember though if yours is yours is pretty stock, isn't it? I don't think you want to trick it out. Or are you looking for mods for that? But yeah, that's a really fun hardware mod. And uh, if anyone on the Discord, Discord or page patron, you know, I have to be a little bit more. Spoil, spoil, spoil those who make the effort to be in Discord in the community. I actually bought uh, too many of those switches. I only needed one switch, but I think I bought a bag of ten or a bag of five. So if you're up for doing that mod on your own one, I will certainly be happy to send you out some of the uh, components to do it. Ooh, a sassy, a sassy young soldier lady now. So Andrew Beer says I need to get a GoTech so I can use an external drive for various machines. Mm. Yeah, that makes sense. So Fair Fight, you've you've basically gone off the whole hog really. You don't really need any mods on yours if you've got the or that set up. Nightmare in the lab. But I've still got that MSX cable over there. I've not tried it, so I've got to... Oh, Robert! Mr. Robert Taylor said he's going to send me some MS and MSX tape, so... We'll... Oh, Rob I... is making some beans on toast. Oh, lovely. I could do with some beans on toast myself. I haven't... To be, to be fair, though, I think I've eaten enough junk since I got home to count as cal calorifically as tea. But you don't get the satisfaction because you didn't have a hot dinner. No, exactly. Now I've decided, and anybody watching, sometimes we do talk about issues like men's issues or mental health. Now I'm going to say this. I've been home alone since Saturday. I do not look after myself. Right? So I can only imagine what it must be like if you're retired or single. But I can see how I would go. And I don't like what I see. So... If I were to set some new rules for myself, and I don't, I might have one day to put this into practice, is that one, any meal has to be a cooked meal. No eating out of the can, no eating ice creams out of the freezer and saying, yeah, that counts as dinner. Because I think you've got to set the table and heat something up or cook something. What do you think, Mr. Dalton? Good rule? I, I agree with you. You've got to take care and you've got to look after yourself. It's almost like you have to respect yourself enough to take the care to do that. Do you know what I mean? Certainly. Certainly. I think this one's just... Ah, uh... oh, Mike... Mike... Sam or Mike Kem has just joined us in the chat. Ooh. Hello, Mike. Well, it is Kem. 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 Okay. Thanks. Wasn't quite sure, but there we go. <laughs> but uh, how are you, sir? Very good, thank you. Good to hear. Good to hear. No, I agree with you, Andrew. The whole thing about uh, you need to take care of yourself, and again, this goes back to the the, the, the important thing: you know, people say they can't cook for themselves. Learn. <coughs> and you've got to you, you've got to eat the rest of your life. You may as well know how to do how to cook it yourself. And it tastes better too. Exactly. <laughs> I think that Rob's got the right idea though. I think the beans on toast is the minimum amount of cooking anyone that can do and it isn't really any effort, is it? No, exactly. Right. I quite like the idea now that we're talking about this. I've got no bread, so it's not going to happen. But how about this, Andrew? How about a mm -hmm. bean toasty? Mm -hmm. A baked bean toasty. Would that work? Uh, you mean as in put them in a breville or something? Yeah, with your mayonnaise. Yes. Uh, well, that, that's in the. That's actually. I used to have a Breville sandwich maker years ago. That was one of the recipes in the book. It was a sausage and bean Breville. Oh, I've got an all-day breakfast in the tin. That would have been oh, amazing. You're sorted. Now you're I've sorted. got no bread though. I've got no bread. Oh. And I'm not turning on the bread maker because it won't make Breville bread. <laughs> well, what you could, what you could potentially do is, uh, in, you could maybe make an omelette in your Breville. Does that really give me any discernible benefit? I mean, it's not like I'm short of cooking implements. I could just cook it or not. <laughs> no, it's better, it's better cooking in the wrong in the wrong thing. <laughs> just for fun. 
Yes, as Rob says, it's a Breville classic. Because let's face facts, it's not a toasty maker. It's a Breville maker in the way that it's a maybe. Maybe it's with our age, but it's a Breville maker. It's not a toasty maker. It's like it's like you call a vacuum a Hoover. Okay, I see. <laughs> and speaking of Breville's, my Breville robotic toaster, which is on my YouTube somewhere if you search for it, um, has lost a side. A whole side is dead on it. And I've had that for over a decade, and it's been the most reliable toaster considering it's electronic. So I'm hoping that because one, it, it, obviously one side works, one doesn't, it kind of seems to me like maybe they've just duplicated the electronic controls twice. Which means I have a reference design to test from. So I've got one broken, I think there'll be one broken PCB and one working PCB, so there is hope. In that. Well, well, personally, I think if uh, if Sage, the electronics company, have anything about them, they will send you a, uh, a one of their Smart Four slice toasters. Sage, is is that now? Does does it have the same functionality as my Breville? Because well, it pretty much does. It pretty much does. It has a button that says a bit more, a lift and look. It's got sliders on the front that look like the transport controls from Star Trek. Hmm. So do you think I need so, to start a tweet campaign to see if they will send me one? <laughs> I think they should, yes. <laughs> they would, I, because I was, I'm quite a Breville evangelist actually. I, uh, not on their other products, their kettles and stuff I've gone through a lot. They're, but uh, their high-end toasters I was quite pleased with. So, I, My criteria, by the way, for buying, at the time at least, was I want the best I can get. I want something that lasts because I'm sick of buying things that I have to replace every year. That is my. That is still my mantra within kitchen appliances. Uh, hence why I've got like a Bosch kettle, a Dulit toaster, KitchenAid mixer. It's. I do find that if you buy the cheap, cheap stuff, it doesn't last. Especially if you use it in any serious way. It's. It's weird now. I'm now on two minds about that. So I'm going to forgive Breville for the kettles dying, because mm -hmm. of the we've a very hard water and I we don't really um, de de-lice them as often de -calc. as de -calc them as often as they should um, but I have that Bosch dishwasher which has let me down I have the Bosch fridge freezer that to be fair we got like 10 years out of but is replaced with a Beko which although isn't as good a build is a better fridge freezer um, mm -hmm. We now have a but is that because the technology's moved on? It might be, um, but it was so much cheaper than the Bosch. You know, the, I, it's mm. definitely not worth buying the Bosch. I could replace, you know, three Beckos for a Bosch. I think I'd rather just yeah. do that. Um, we have a Bosch oven now from, I can't remember the earlier one, but the Bosch oven's good. That was only 30 quid because somebody bought it for their kitchen never used it, so I, I just slid that in. Uh, because I, I, when I installed our kitchen, I fit like a fast fit connector system. Mm -hmm. So it was really cool. Um, but uh, actually, that replaced a Bowmatic that was quite hard working, but our Bowmatic hob is still working. So I quite like the old Bowmatic stuff if you want the sort of British brand. If you're like me, you're, you have an induction hob. Induction hob, yeah. I'd never go back to a. Once you've had induction, you'd never go back to anything else. Well, and the only option here in, in the countryside would be a, mm -hmm. a regular electric, crap electric hob or a halogen well, one, which was both that's terrible. How I, that's how I discovered uh, induction hobs, because when I lived in my previous house, we were in a similar situation to you. We only had electric and oil, um, so it was uh, a halogen electric hob. Or one of them bloody cast iron ring hobs, and they're just awful. Oh uh, god, milk, just milk burning on them, and all that rubbish yeah. you can't be having with um, it. I'll tell you what, the efficiency and the control of it's better than gas, induction. isn't it? Better than it gas, is, well, even. In the house I'm in now, we had a gas hob, and I replaced it with induction, and I don't regret it at all because it's just the, the control and, and clean. Yeah. Oh, it is clean as well. So yeah, you know, say appliances are yeah. Maybe you get what you pay for, but maybe you don't nowadays. It's hard to know because so many things are made in the same factories by the same companies anyway. Um, well, a lot of names that used to be big names are just licensed to big corporations now, aren't they? So there's no guarantee. It's probably where you buy it from is more important. Yeah. And, so and it, it depends on what you're cooking in it too. If you're just doing like TV dinners, you don't need a really fancy thing to cook TV dinners. 
Mm. Actually, you're, you're right in a way, is because it's if you think about it, um, TV dinner is a good point because it, you, you you sort of coming onto microwave right technology. Mm. And to be honest, most of the gadgets we use, we just use one button, which is the start button that you hit, and it adds thirty seconds every time. Yeah. And the dishwasher, we only ever use one mode. Washing machine, we only ever use one mode. So it's really they can be a lot simpler, can't we? We always buy things. We go, oh, if I pay 20 quid more, I'll get all these extra features. <laughs> and you just don't use them. More to go wrong. Not very right. much, though. But when you, when you consider well, how much technology has moved on and come down in recent years, I remember as a child, 30... About 32 years ago, my parents bought our first microwave when I was about eight. And it was a, it was a Creda brand one with analog controls and it was only like 600 watts or whatever it was back then and I think in the 80s it cost in the mid 80s I think it was about five six hundred pounds for the microwave wow yeah yeah mm. I bet yeah, that microwave could... would pr probably still right. be going now because um, when we, our parents had our first microwave it was really heavy metal all the door yes. catches were metal all of that and I remember uh, getting my mum a microwave to replace that and I think within the first week she was wearing a bracelet or something caught on one of those door hook things snapped mm. it clean off ruined it and you yeah. think yeah it's shit now that's why microwaves cost 50 quid now yeah sorry McBeam you were going to say something sir Oh, uh, sorry, I forgot what I was going to say. <laughs> <laughs> but my, the microwave was such a a game changer. Oh yeah, when you first got the microwave, you cooked everything you could in it, and you then you got tired of it, and then it sits in the corner. Well, it it's used used here for heating things up and. Right, generally heat, heating and defrosting. I think it's uh, it's probably the one of the hardest worked things. I think, to be honest, considering how cheap they are, right? They are really right. a real hard working piece of equipment in the kitchen, aren't they? They freed up a lot of time for uh, watching Betamax videos. Betamax <laughs> videos. <laughs> now that's something you don't see much of these days. No. There was something more magic, though, about analog tapes, though, wasn't there? The, the, the physically picking something quite clunking up and hearing it going in the machine, etc., and everything making the noise and getting ready to... It was, it, it, there was more majesty and ceremony about it. Uh... I think after the first one, you had to rewind the stuff manually with a rewinder because it didn't have a rewind on it. Mm. I remember we had a... Um, a, a top loader uh, VCR uh, video recorder my parents had from Radio Rentals at the time and I it used to chew tapes up like you wouldn't believe <laughs> did you ever remember that you people used to buy rewinders tape rewinders so you wouldn't wear out your machine mm. they used to sell them in Blockbuster as, a, as an upsell oh that's right. handy isn't it that makes sense for them um, I'm trying to think back now to that we had, uh, do you remember you used to have remote controls on the VHS players which were on a wire? I certainly do. Um, and then the whole um, thing about VHS versus Betamax. I like Betamax so much and uh, that's one loss. <laughs> Not enough porn on it. That, that genuinely was the reason. <laughs> yeah, that was. Yeah. Now, Unfortunately, adult content drives so much. Now, something that's interesting, though, what you were saying, though, about the whole experience, the problem is with, with digital stuff, it's very clinical, isn't it? Whereas mm. you had more ceremony with uh, with your old, ye oldie things. Now, I've got something here that I was hoping to do with Tecmo, and I'll speak to him about anyway, but maybe I'll just make them anyway, these videos. I uh, have a whole bunch of Walkmans, and unfortunately, it doesn't have my dad's Walkman, which I know exists somewhere in the house in London, which is the Guardians of the Galaxy one. You know the one in the Guardians of the Galaxy he's got? Yeah. That exact one with the blue thing and all of that. But I do have a few period Walkmans. And um, recently I did something with tapes because I bought that tape player to play on the MSX. And I found a box of old tapes and they're just some dross nursery rhymes. But they sounded amazing. 
There was one sort of hits tape on there. I think it was level 42, if you recall the video. So people were telling me it was level 42 I was playing. And it just did sound nostalgic. Do you know what I mean? It was. It sounded oh, yeah. right, how you remember it sounding. It did. I just remember... I just remember playing music and it being more magical back in the day. I mean, I've got to be fair, my my sound system in my living room now is pretty high-end. It's pretty good. But it doesn't have the majesty of when I used to put a tape in my father's hi-fi, which was one of those... Um, it was one of the, the all-in-ones, but the flat, wide ones with a clear glass box lid on it. Oh, right. Nice. And it had a it had a single tape deck on the on the top in the same Come chamber on, you bastard. as the record as the record player. But it also had an eight track on the front of it. And then it, uh, you had to take your time and and have a mixed tape, and you had to decide what was going where and when <laughs> and how, and that was kind of fun too. Oh yes. But why I think was... back right to that period. Um, you had CDs which were kind of coming out, but for personal music, you really had the kind of mini disc. And I had a, a Sony mini disc player, and they were amazing. They ran off like a single AA cell, like and it was 60 hours playback. It was like the MP3 player of its day. Well, actually, I had MP3 players in that day, and they held like 20 minutes of music, and the battery lasted five. Um, but there was something about having a medium that you could carry around that made audio tape better because mini discs you couldn't really buy pre-recorded media properly you just have to record off them didn't you now something record. that's very sad with my kids and i've realized we've got a generation now who've totally lost out on this is that they mm -hmm. can't have their own player so they can't go to bed turn on something put in like a nursery rhyme tape or whatever they want and go to sleep like we did with superman tape or whatever if you remember that we had as kids we'd have our little collections we'd have all of that and it's that you can't even come close with anything for kids now for that experience with music it just doesn't exist does it no no you can have an amazon alexa and set a sleep timer but it's not the same they need something to collect they like the pokemon cards they like the things like that I'm, tr I'm looking now, because I, I did a, 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 a um, MP3 player for my kid with a, with a CD, not C yeah, an SD card full of um, nursery rhymes. Mm -hmm. But it doesn't have the same experience. He plays like number one, you know, which is whatever, you know, th three little pigs. It doesn't have like the cover art, the putting it no. in the machine that, you know, they don't, they don't enjoy it as much as I enjoyed certainly my superhero magazine books that had the tape and had the book with it and all of that stuff. But, but was, was, was so, there anything better though when you set a, a film to record or something at night and you'd leave the tape run and run and run and then you have the bounty of the weird late night shows at the end of the tape? <laughs> I don't remember that. Andrew Beer says time to invent one. That's a good idea. Fairfight's talking about the same Street Hawk tape I found in that box. Yeah, that was funny. That was hilarious actually. Um... Nursery Rhymes asking when where they would be famous because it was bros. <laughs> Time to invent a format. Well, I mean, you could kind of do it, I suppose, with just old SD cards and just put a mini, an MP3 on each uh, one. Uh, Mr. C says, like Euro Trash. I mean, that was we would probably be teenagers at that time when when Euro Trash, but that was yeah, Euro classic. Trash was something I remember. This is this is the ITV night nightline. But wouldn't it be toilet? like teletext and stuff, wasn't it? No, ITV used to show um, a programming block of all this really weird imported um, American cable content to fill the, the late hours. They'd have some old, like, really hardcore movies on, like, you know, like 70s action films, Dirty Harry's and the like, or they'd have, uh, like, behind the scenes of movies, all these shows talking about the latest movies and music, and um, just all this weird content. Ah, okay. Drunk o'clock TV. That's it, that's the stuff. Prisoner cell blockades following. Yep. <laughs> but, now, let's go on to Euro Trash, because I was thinking of Euro Trash the other day when I was having a shower of all places. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, I was, I was really thinking about that, having a good old think. And, uh, <laughs> but honestly, what I was thinking was... Wasn't it brilliant the way they had these really northern voices doing the translation? Do you remember when it would show like a clip? Yeah. 
and they'd do an interview yep. of some nudist on a German beach. It was like, oh yeah. Yeah, JX, JJXP is saying, I do realise that the blocks were different because ITV was regional. It was, but I was. I, it was quite good for me because I grew up, I had two ITV regions. Ah. So I could record from different regions, Central and Yorkshire TV. Now I remember we were in London, so I don't know which London was, but I, re I remember when we used to go to Kent, it was like Meridian or something, wasn't it? And that must be those different mm. regions that you're talking about. Yeah, but you tried doing what I did, move to Wales when you're 16 and you lose Channel 4 and you're S4C. Well, they call it S Pederek. <laughs> S4C. S4C. It's like wrong Channel 4 when it used to be shared with. It's like BBC 4, 4, though, isn't it? It was almost a lot of the contents were like for the B. Mm. Anglia. Andrew Beer says the voiceovers were the best bits. <laughs> I think that you think you're right. I do. I think that na naughty, saucy content was quite good, really. I mean, we, we're, we're dulled to it now because you have all of the sexy West Worlds and stuff that we were talking about before. Um, but yeah, I think it, it made us a bit European, didn't it, to have a few boobs on telly? It certainly did, but doesn't exist. You, uh, one of the first shows ever shown on Channel Four when Channel Four first started out was actually nudity during the daytime. Really? What was it? Naked yoga. Really? No. What? Seriously. Links. One of their put, first. Get find the YouTube. I'm, I need that in the link I'm in the chat for everybody. <laughs> trying to find when it aired. It was on a documentary I saw. Um, but naked. It was called Naked Yoga, and it was one of their one of their first first shows. We never got anything like that in the states. I tell you what, you guys, I, I you suffer. You suffer in the States. I cannot believe how television works out there. Unbelievable. Just adverts every two minutes. Cutting the sh yeah. front. Whenever like, an advertiser decides that they're going to put the ad, you're just watching something instantly. An ad comes in, cuts the show in half. Uh, I, I, can, I can imagine there must be a lot of people paying for some sort of paid services. So you don't have that bullshit to deal with. And I think that's probably why pirating of TV shows probably occurs just because people can't stand all of that stuff. Right. No. And that was a good thing about um, recording it because then you could just flip past all the commercials. Oh, that makes a lot of sense, yeah. I wonder if people invented technologies to try to... Like TiVo. TiVo must have gone on really well when that came out first over there. It's it's quite, quite interesting though because America had so many more channels even non-cable channels, you know, your, 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 your network channels, as you call them out there, than we had for probably until, what was it, about 96, 97. We only had four, four channels everyone had. I guess this, the US is probably similar. I mean, how many broadcast channels would there have been? Not many. Uh, 13. So, you, you... plus... 13 plus uh, uh, PBS channels, so probably about, I don't know, uh, 15. But when you say 15, that's 15 RF channels, or does that include cable? That's not including cable. Wow. You, so, and cable is different. So that must have been quite a interesting sort of congested um, RF band, because even here in the UK, you know how much trouble we have with transmitters and how you had to tune them regionally. Can you imagine having another extra sort of nine channels to deal with? <laughs> right. No, we only had five, didn't we? Ninety-seven. Ninety-seven. We got our fifth channel. Wow. I mean, we had we had satellite and cable, but um, for channels that everyone had, it was it was four channels. Oh. But we have we have a tax to pay on TV, and I don't think you have that in the US. TV license. And of those 15 channels, um, uh, some of them weren't uh, utilized, like Channel 3 and that sort of thing. Oh, well, these are literally fixed... Um, oh, yeah, okay, because I think in the US, this is interesting too, there is this idea that you have a channel number that's associated with an RF frequency, right? Because we see that right. stuff, channel 39 and stuff written on our gadgets. Um, I don't think we did that here. We, uh, 
we didn't. No, we just we just tuned a frequency and associated it with a channel number on the TV, didn't we? Like uh, the old arcade games, you did uh, have either channel three or channel four, and you could switch between them at, uh, to get your Ataris and that sort of thing to work. Mm. True, the guys in the chat are saying oh, when it came out, most people couldn't get it for years later, which is true. A lot of a lot of transmitters didn't carry it. And now no, none of them do, sort of, in, mm -hmm. in a way, because we don't have um, analog TV anymore, do we? No. No. I wonder if they still yeah, have analog TV in the States. No, we don't have analog TV anymore either. It's all digital. I do know in certain... Good evening, Robert. How are you doing? Fine, welcome. Just gonna uh, put in topless darts on live TV. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> And some naked right. yoga for later. What about the weather midget? Well, who, who did that? That live TV oh, was the brainchild live, of um, live what's TV her name? was nuts, wasn't it? No, that was later. It was a vehicle by uh, what's her name? Bloody hell! You'll have to wiki it. I'm looking at live TV, the channel. Who am I thinking of? What is her name? People in the chat, you must know. Live TV was a British station operated by the Mirror Group. Oh, that come on. Sense. Cool down. Now, cool on, down. The, on this uh, uh, yoga program, New Yoga, were they attractive people or were they kind of gay? It, <laughs> it was filmed in the 70s, so there was a lot of hair. Nice. <laughs> you don't, you, don't, you don't get that anymore. Nope, you don't get hairspray like that. <laughs> so it was it was interesting. Uh, yeah, live TV. Um, they had topless darts. Uh, they had uh, the weather mid the weather midget, who I thought was brilliant. They had a mid. Oh, you're right. Who's who's choking? Me. I'm sorry. <laughs> That's okay. That's okay. The weather midget was basically a midget on a trampoline, who would bounce up and down as he. Uh, explained what the weather was doing in various parts of the country. And in one episode, he fell off the trampoline and broke his ankle live on TV. Did he have to use the trampoline because he was too short to point at the yes. board? Right. Yes, so he would bounce <laughs> up and down <laughs> on the trampoline to like, reach Scotland. Is that... I like the idea of it, but I feel guilty now for liking the idea of that. Is that because of modern sensibilities now? Says that you're not supposed to find that funny? Well, he was a former Oompa Loompa from... The Willy Wonka movie. Was he really? Yes. Oh, that's even better. Yeah. Yeah. To be fair, there's only so much work you're gonna get. Exactly. Exactly. His name was Rusty Goff. Rusty Goff. Oh, good name. And he's still alive. He was in. Uh... Oh, he was in. He was in the film Willow. He was in uh, the Harry Potter films. Time he Bandits. He didn't make time bandits, unfortunately. I almost again feel guilty for saying that, but it's why sh you know what I mean. It's no, they. If, are, you're, they, if you're going to be an actor and you're a person of with dwarfism or one of the other conditions like dwarfism, your acting roles are going to be a little limited. But is it me because I assumed he would be in Time Bandits? That sounds like racist or something. Not really. Because <laughs> he, played, he played a Jawa in Star Wars, and he was one of the. Uh, he was a guard, a midget guard in uh, Flash Gordon. A midget guard in Flash Gordon? I don't even remember the midget guards. Oh, they're oh. at the start of the movie. God, and he, was, he's and, and he played a lep he played a leprechaun in Chuckle Vision. Wow, that seems that seems like something I might have seen. Oh, by the way. If you look on Twitter, I posted a tweet, tweet today. I, I sent it to Nostalgia Nerd because I thought you might like it, but I think other people can see that tweet if they click the right thing. But in that tweet, there's a link to a YouTube video of Tomorrow's World, the Tomorrow's World 25th anniversary, which I think would have been around 89 or something, by my no, reckoning. About 98, wasn't it? No, no, way earlier than that. And, um,. It was all, you know, it's really sad about it. It makes you feel really nostalgic. One, because you 
you know, you can see the technologies they're talking about and how it all sort of came off. Two, you can, you can, someone, someone's on, uh, not on mute on their YouTube. <laughs> um, two, you, um, you see how accurate tomorrow's world were with their predictions. They were really good at predicting a lot of stuff that actually did happen. Mm. Um, but three, it's really 1990. sad. 1990. And three, it's really sad because it was all pre-Europe, right? Right? Mm. And it was so forward-looking and how it's all going to work and how everything's going to be great. And a lot of it what did turn out pretty damn good. And how mm. we've we've sort of shit it all away now. Now you don't know, we're living more in uncertainty and we don't know if we're going to do better out of this or it's all, you know, just a big step backwards. But I did like the help. Stream rant alert. Stream rant alert. Well, no, no, yeah, no, I'm going to stop now. But watch it anyway if you want that nostalgic feeling. Oh, no, I used to like Tomorrow's World. Even, Why don't even we have it now? Because people aren't interested in the future anymore, I suppose. There's something that BBC does. I think it's called Click or whatever, but it's a bit lame. Mm. But... I suppose... I... Oh. Yeah. I think the problem is as well, it's been replaced by those stupid videos of tap that people put on that you get embedded in Facebook. Oh, it, but it's all like pseudoscience and stuff. This is the problem. Mm. People rely on Twitter and tweets that Elon Musk and people tweet, which is mm. bullshit pseudoscience, right? He's the snake oil huckster. Don't get me, yeah, he really is. And whereas Tomorrow's World at least tried to be reasonably accurate and scientific, didn't they? I used to like, who, who was the one on Tomorrow's World that was like a grandfather? He had a nice beard and was very calming. Raymond Baxter? Might be Raymond Baxter. He had a wonderful wooden box for folding jumpers that I always wanted. What? what, what, what? Please elaborate on the wonderful wooden box. He had this special wooden box. Right. And it, folded your jump, it was for folding t-shirts and jumpers into, like, neat piles. And okay. it was like you'd put like, the jumper on the top of this box and you'd put, slot this bit in and push it down and the pushing down process folded it all really neatly and then you'd lift the box up and you'd have like a stack of all your clothes neatly folded. Was it like, um, so we've got these t-shirt folders that flap around, <clears throat> you've seen them, plastic things. It was, I've seen that, no, it was, it, was diff it was a bit different, it was literally like a wooden box with like, it looked, it, compared, it looked a bit like a beehive kind of thing and you put your t-shirt like on the gap in the middle and push down with this bit in the middle and somehow it... All it all. It was it was wonderful. So you'll notice it have gone quiet because I've I've finished the game, but I'm trying to find the Tomorrow's World wooden box uh, video. Yes. It's... Uh, I don't know. It's. I don't know. I, I remember it as a child, so it's quite a long time ago. But maybe. Do you think it was real though? That's the question. It was. It was a. It was a real I say, first thing. Of all, how Raymond Baxter wouldn't lie to me. Do I get? Will I get? Um, um, it's, it's BBC fight. They'll be saying, "No, you shan't be playing our content on a stream." No. Oh no, it wasn't Raymond Baxter. I do apologise. It wasn't. It was. No. But look at all these. These. This really cool. Though. And I remember all of these people, these presenters. And it's, the funny thing is, you don't really know their names, do you? They weren't famous enough to be. No, except, I mean Maggie Philbin was married to Keith Chegwin, wasn't she? Poor thing. Um, the only one I'm, I can remember, honestly, out of this period is Esther Ranson, because she was on... Um, is it That's Life? Yes. Yes. Oh, computer so, file. I tell you what would be worth watching on a, uh, on a... You could probably get away with it. There's a clip. Uh, ITV database. And it's the sending the email clip, Rob. I think you've seen this one? Yeah. On YouTube, it's it's wonderful. Well, we'll have to post a link in the Discord for anybody who right. wants to see that one. I will post it. Ah, oh, well, look, look, there's a there's a there's a Hideki, a Hideki OK for music composition here. Kajino Toshiro, David Winstead, Alex Jimenez, Jimenez, Poo, Ackman, and Tom, Capcom, all the staff. They'll be back next hunting season. Against the prospect that aliens will spread all over North America with lightning speed, all of them were miraculously annihilated due to the explosion of a nuclear fusion furnace caused by the crash of a spaceship. 
But it's very likely that. Oh, see how quickly that went through. It was. I do apologize. It was Bob Sims. Bob Sims. B O B Bob S Y M E S. If you look at a picture of him, he's a proper classic British inventor slash grandfather slash Father Christmas. Wow. Right, let's have a look. Uh, you know, I know we're, we're going to wrap things up soon, but uh, I think we have to put it in. Sims as in SIM cards. No, S Y M E S. Simes. Simes. Bob Simes. That's right. That's how you say it and pronounce it and everything. Wow, he has got a real Father Christmas beard. He looks like a proper inventor, doesn't he? Or a kindly grandfather. Hmm. What was the uh, name of the woman who got caught fire on children's TV show? Oh, do you mean um, <laughs> Anthea Turner? When Anthea Turner got set on fire by the Royal British Fusiliers stunt show. I think we should watch that. I think we'd be allowed to watch that. That's a, yes. cl a clip that nobody would. As Baz says, Bob was a ledge. Oh, my goodness. That was in... What was she sitting on the pyrotechnic? Yes. Hang on, let's let's review the footage now. Floren forensically, got that wrong. Mm -hmm. So there, there it is. I think that's it there, isn't it? Because it's. I think if you look at this um, loading ramp, mm -hmm. it probably has a thing in each corner at the end of the uh, stay here. Mm -hmm. That is crazy. Do you think it was one of those things where they knew she was sitting on it and just let it go for a laugh, but then didn't realise? I don't know, but apparently it was. She was told to sit exactly there, and she'd be fine. But I don't know. Dangerous Cause... levels of hairspray in the eighties. Yeah. Wasn't there a thing where Michael Jackson's hair hair caught fire? Yes, that happened. Yeah. And Richard Pryor. Yeah, oh, this that is a Pepsi commercial. This is a way higher quality version here, and look, it, that must be it right there. I mean, that's insane where she's sitting. Let's see if we can. Actually, YouTube has features, doesn't it? Speed, look. Quarter speed, please. So we can maybe play it. I feel like we're in, like, Enhance. Enhance. Ooh, it's coming. What's that she's got round her neck, by the way? It looks like a little penis. Little penis. It's going to go. Boom. Wow, that's, yeah, that's exactly where it is. Oh my god, look at... But it looks like a microphone's on fire! I mean, that that's insane! You kind of think they don't put out much, uh, you know, flammable material, but clearly they do. Yes. No. But uh, there's, there's so many bizarre videos. I think one Rob and I saw a while ago was the video of Tommy Cooper's final performance. Right. He died on stage on live TV. Really? And everyone's, like, laughing. They're like, what? Yes! Yeah, that is hilarious. He's on stage, and it, the clip's easily findable on YouTube, but he's on stage in the middle of his act, and he just collapses and starts doing this snore, basically, because he's, he's brain dead. Yeah. And the audience are all laughing hysterically, thinking it's part of the act. That must have happened before as well. That's, that's, that's probably a common way to go. Don't you think, if yeah. you're an ageing... Yeah, I don't know, but he, he went. But the, the worst bit is, as they cut to adverts, he's someone pulls him under the curtain, and it looks like it's a comedy pulling him off stage. Oh no! But that's the way he would have wanted to go, surely. Yeah, I like to think that. Yes. Now, speaking of people going the way they would have wanted to go, I think it's time for our Rod Hull joke of the stream. Um, well, so we've not had a Rod Hull joke tonight, have we? No, we haven't. So, can somebody please? Uh... And probably you, Andrew. Um, well, I think I think I'll, I'll defer to um, to Rob or Mike. Bean, please feel free to tell a Rod Hull joke, but since he wasn't an American celebrity, probably. And I shall play some Rod Hull footage whilst the joking is going on. I think it's still at quarter speed, which is adequate. Sorry, never heard of him. There we go. I don't hey, know any jokes, but uh, he shouldn't have took Emu up with him when he went to fix his TV aerial. <laughs> <laughs> That's for sure. <laughs> I'll look one up then, shall we? Well, St. Peter said to Rod Hull, just think if you had cable, you'd be here right now. <laughs> <laughs> ah, okay, here's a, sw a sweary one. What were Rod Hull's last words? Fly, you fucker, know. fly! 
<laughs> oh yeah. What's really strange is if you look at that, imagine Emu not being there. No. He's basically using his hand to fondle the inner leg of a TV show presenter. Rod, I think he was very molesty, and it's he was allegedly. Well, okay, let's that's that's fine. Uh, Rod Hull with children. Let's go he'd there. The, he'd be on the U tree list, wouldn't he? Oh, certainly though. Come on, I mean, if if you said now, I want to put this on me hand, and I'm going to run around chasing kids. God, the I was. Only thing, the only thing I've heard of um, from uh, the UK is Blue Peter, but that's about as far as I go. Oh, Blue Peter! That, that Blue Peter was a show I I loved to hate. It was really weird. There's some sections in it I liked, and a lot of sections I didn't like. So. There is an amazing Blue Peter clip. Let's see if you can find it. Um, Let's do this. Let's do it. Blue Peter. Oh, I hope. I don't know if it's posted or not. There's this excellent one. Do you remember they used to at Christmas have the um, the Salvation Army band come in <laughs> and they'll be singing. I well, they had one. The reason when I like I liked Blue Peter was because they always had Doctor Who, and I was a big fan of Doctor ah. Who. Uh, oh my god, this looks gonna this is gonna be amazing, isn't it? I'm not gonna play the sound because I don't wanna infringe anyone's copyright, but this is a hat trick. Armstrong and Miller, if anyone's watching from the US, you have to watch them. They're hilarious. And I can imagine this is just the most cringy, hilarious y blue pee of piss take ever. <laughs> Did anybody ever watch Armstrong and Miller's um Oh, what do they call it? Zeitgeist or something. No, I didn't. Sorry, never heard of it. Uh, they did a, a show. What was it called? They pretended to do a tech show on it. Um, oh, what the hell was it? I think even maybe Stuart Ash was on it once. Um, anyway, they just they just they do quite a lot of things where they are pretending to be real shows, but it's all subverted and rude or, or sweary or whatever. But ah. Oh. Kill them. Yeah, exactly, Baza. Kill them. <laughs> oh, what about, speaking of Blue Peter, what about when the garden got vandalised? Oh, I, I, yeah, I didn't care. You didn't care? <laughs> no. You, you, you emptied the engine oil into the uh, yeah. into the pond and, and smashed the lovely ornamental urn sent by Mr. Whatever of Trowbridge. I would have, I would have, and I'm not, I'm not proud of it to say this. Yeah, my, my, I'm more, more, uh, mindful now but i would have thought blue peter garden was well gay and i would have been totally wouldn't care about it the, but, the best bit is you can see percy thrower the gardener is so angry in this clip which one's percy it, thrower then hang on let's let's wind that, it back that's the lovely ornamental urn which part? Talk about. hang on wait which would be, oh this thing yeah this i'm cleaning it <laughs> it's so like when is this 70s 80s 80s. No one would give a shit about an urn these days. No, no. But uh, there's a. You'll see in a minute Percy Thrower, the gardener, who. I'm going to get ready to pause this. Ah. So there's a lot of stuff in the comments. We're not really. We're not respecting the comment section. I, I do, do apologise. We've got yeah. Jay. So we've got. Need to name the end of the streams the classy section. The cl Someone shit in the pond. <laughs> I would. And Baz says, I would have done Janet, though. This is the classy section, clearly. <laughs> I used to love Janet Ellis. Oh. But don't you, don't you, didn't you like her daughter better? Oh, no, it didn't show yeah. your clip. The Blue Peter Gardener, Percy Thrower, was furious. Where is he, then? Which is... That's him. He's the old... old oh, I haven't got the problem the full thing in the clip. He's the old man in the, ja in the wax jacket. <laughs> but he is furious. And he hated... You could tell he hated children. This guy here. With the box. That's him. Mm. Box. Oh, hang on. I think you've got the wrong clip. That's why. How can I have the wrong clip? You were remembering is... the wrong clip. Oh, time no. capsules. I bet they... Oh, <laughs> is this real? or Yeah. I would love to do a video. We should... There's Armstrong and Miller should do a Blue Peter video opening a time capsule, but it's all full of really, like, rude stuff or racist stuff or whatever it would be from <laughs> the past, and they're being really embarrassed on screen. <laughs> So what did, oh. what did you have in it? It's all got. A, oh, what was her name? Uh, Connie Huck, wasn't it? Yeah, she married to Charlie Brooker now. Really? 
Uh-huh. You, I like how my voice went high. Like that's really surprising. Really, hello. Well, Baz, if you wish to see Janet's um, jubblies in her youth, uh, there's an episode of the Sweeney. I'm not going to type that in because I kind of feel that we do no. swearing on this channel, but we're probably not going to do any nudity apart from maybe me getting man boobs out at some point if it was like yes. sports yes. related or something. Yes. But if Baz wants to see Janet in that way, he can feel free. But shall we have a look at the lovely Sophie Ellis Bexter? S O P H I E. Let's not forget why Janet Ellis was fired from Blue Peter. Why was she fired? Having a child out of wedlock. Really? Yes. I feel I can't click on any Sophie Ellis Bexter things because they're all like Vivo music and I'll get hit so hard with this. I, w- I just wouldn't. <laughs> I just I just really wouldn't bother with anything that's going to uh, possibly infringe because Top Hat got uh, stopped in less than 30 seconds. <laughs> to be honest, he's probably on YouTube's watch list anyway. <laughs> they had it in for him, bless. Oh. Do you remember UFO though, the TV series? I uh, certainly do. Let's let's see if we can get a little clip of that. I'd quite like to. Oh. No sound though, we'll be all right. Oh, I loved all this kind of thing, and it, this was a really good. Oh. Look at this though, it, uh, the, the costumes here. Look, I'm just going to show you. This is kind of. Um, when would this have been, Andrew? This would have been oh, definitely seventies. Oh, UFO! This was seventies, wasn't it? And they had some 70s flesh in it. They weren't shy yeah. in those days. They, they knew where they were getting their viewers. Um, right. But all of these um, costumes in it, they were really sexy, didn't you think? Because there's ones where the underwater ones, the women are wearing pretty much chain mail and supposedly more or less nude underneath it. It was all really like, um, should we say progressive in the wardrobe departments? It's very much Game of yeah. Thrones. <laughs> This island Earth. I hear a lot of typing and a lot of pasting. There must be some stuff going on in the Discord that I need to look at later. Well. Oh, look, there's a whole movie here called This Island Earth. I'm going to post this the island link. Earth. Yes. This island yeah, Earth. A, that's a good movie. It's a great movie. It's also the movie they spoofed in Mystery Science Theater 3000, the movie. Right. Is there a Mystery Science Theater 3000, the movie? How have I yes, not seen there is. that? Oh, yeah. You'll find it in the usual place. Oh, yeah. Mystery Science Theatre. What did you think of Mystery Science Theatre, the new one? I quite enjoyed it. I thought it wasn't bad. I really like it, but it, it's it's absolutely slagged. If you look at the um, IMDb, it, it doesn't mm. get. Um, I've seen this. Is this the one with the the magic mirror that they go through? Am I am I getting confused? No, no. This one where they build an interocitor, which, quite frankly, I think you should yeah. build for your office. An right. That is an interocitor. It's a science fiction device that features in many things okay so look this is what you need this is you need the lyrics for mystery science theater enough to learn all of these words and we should do one <laughs> oh yeah look robot roll call cabot do 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 so do 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 gypsy crow oh. <laughs> I love this bit. I love the last look, the last verse. If you're wondering how he eats and breathes and other science facts, just repeat to yourself, it's just a show. I should really just relax for Mystery Science Theater 3000. And Andrew Dalton, this is for you, Mr. Watching Prometheus and shitting on every aspect of it. Just relax. (laughs) (laughs) My favourite episode of Mystery Science Theatre 3000 is Space Mutiny. I'm going to check out Space Mutiny and remind myself, but I like... Um, what was that um, South Korea... or it be Republic of Korea, that one. Um, oh, no, we were talking about it. With the kid with the ray gun. Yongari! You want to watch Yongari? Young Gary. <laughs> Young Gary. Because Young Gary is hilarious. And the problem is, when, when you watch Mystery Science Theatre on Young Gary, everything they say in it, you are thinking... You know they get it spot on? Right. You're watching, why is that kid doing that? Why are they letting him do this? Or why is the monster dead? <laughs> oh, yeah, they got it wired. <laughs> oh, this looks amazing. I know what I'm going to be watching later on this week. Look at the blueness of that guy. It was. Do you think someone on YouTube has actually put on the Forbidden Planet as well? 
Uh, quite possibly. We should call this the sort of pirate TV stream. Yeah, just be careful. No, yeah, uh, I'm not careful. posting it. I'm just posting links to stuff that exists on YouTube. Uh, well, Space Mutiny episode of uh, Mystery Science Theatre is on Netflix. Oh, really? We'll check that out. Also, I'm going to post this because it sounds amazing. Um, so I can catch it later in the chat. <laughs> Baza says David Dickinson <laughs> for that guy with the big, uh, big forehead and tan. But look, this is 12 hours of ambient sounds. I think I would like to live in a universe with the ambient sounds from Forbidden Planet. Mm, right. So I think... was... go ahead. The sounds were done by a, a couple um, were the first um, electronic. Um, Music people. Really? Yeah, mm. they're the ones who kind of pioneered that whole genre. Well, I think that um, I'm going to have a look through some of these documentaries on YouTube and we'll uh, we'll give uh, credit to look. So this this here's one, which is interesting because I don't know if Ulrich Krauss, Krauss has actually... He's just nicked something, hasn't he? And he's put on his YouTube channel and he's got 45 subs. Mm. It's a bit naughty, isn't it? But it's there. I'll naughty, give it a watch. Carry I think on. it's VB something. Uh, I forget their names now. But, yeah, they were the first one. There they are. That was them right there. Mm. Well, we have to look back and have a look at all of these things. Right. Well, we've been going for nearly three hours. And... Although it's been incredibly gratifying for us to see that we've had, what, well, around 20 people. There's a few that dropped out. Oh, that's pretty good. I think, you know, I know it's not, we're not, we're you not talking. Two, two dislikes of the stream, though. That's amazing. Two dislikes in the stream. Um, but I feel that we're getting, a, we have a really good community here of like-minded people. And um, I was, I was kind of bored tonight. I had some work to do and I should have probably spoken to my wife and I'm going to speak to her after this. But um, this, to me, I think is more entertaining than watching the old telly sometimes, isn't it? You know, it's you can all jump in the Discord and we'll have a chat. So we, I think more of this. That's my opinion. More of this. That sounds good. <laughs> and uh, thank you, everybody, of like-minded lunatics. And Andrew Beer says it's been fun. Mr. Caesar, thanks for the stream. But JJXB says carry on at your convenience. So I think we will uh, have a look at that point. And Fairfax saying people who don't sleep. Yeah, because it is late. I think we are late people here. Um, and that's fine too. Well, it's almost supper time here, so in the States. So, so you go enjoy your supper, and I'm going to go uh, maybe rifle through the cupboards and feel guilty and eat a chocolate bar. And uh, yeah, same time whenever. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All the best. Good night, everybody at home. Thanks for everything. Speak to you soon.